Good morning, afternoon, evening, or otherwise, everybody. Welcome, welcome to my second stream campaign, The Golden K, uh, featuring the Hijack crew this time, my good pals and friends since forever. Say hi, hi guys. Hello. 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 Yeah. Hello. So uh, yeah, though I, I saw a couple of questions in the chat already. Uh, no, you do not have to have watched Necrohunt to be caught up with what's going on on this. It's going to be an entirely independent campaign. Uh, this is going to be a much shorter one. It will not be as long as Necrohunt, uh, three to four sessions at max. So, but you know, a nice little palate cleanser, a bite-sized adventure with, uh, with a, a little lunchable friends. of a campaign. <laughs> a lunchable of a campaign. But without further ado, we can begin. Welcome, one and all, to the lustrous expanse where magic and monsters, taverns and tarasks, and yes, dungeons and dragons are reality. Today, I bring you a simple tale of such wonders, where a small group of outstanding individuals use their might, their swiftness, their wits, and perhaps even their cunning to achieve amazing feats. Welcome to the Golden K. It is the year 208, and on the western coast of the kingdom of Belkinus lies a port town, Pasto, where most of the kingdom's aquatic trade is made. Here, uh, diverse walks of life go into and out of for equally diverse reasons. Whatever those may be, it's plainly obvious to tell that this is a place of business and profit. There's much coin to be made in one of the continent's greatest places of trade. And as such, it tends to draw those who wish to be blessed by fortune's bounty and those proficient at obtaining it. Not the least of which would be a dragonborn captain, Tark Rackmorn. And I'm going to show his portrait now. Ooh, hoo, hoo, hoo. All right. Hello, captain. What a man. <laughs> what a man I love him. Man, what a man, what a who has hired a crew to accompany and assist him in finding the fabled legendary island, the Golden K, at the commission of a very rich royal family visiting from the kingdom of Elinthi. The K is rumored to be a place of great riches where heroes and lords and other high figures of status go to hide away their most treasured possessions, though few can say for certain if such an island truly exists. Among his crew, we see various people starting off with a Yuan Ti in the middle of the docks, first to arrive among the crew members. I'm going to show them off. Boop! Yes! This wonderful art was made by Haunted Elevator, all one word, H-A-U-N-T-E-D-E-L-E-V-A-T-O-R, Haunted Elevator. On Instagram, they're a wonderful artist. Thank you, Ian, for referring me. And so, yeah, Heather, uh, go ahead and introduce yourself if you have anything to plug and who you will be playing. I don't really do social media, so no plugs. <laughs> uh, hello, I'm Heather. I have a 1T named Latilla. She has some sad pasts that she's attempting to not think about. And she's here to recoup money after getting a very large back tattoo. Yeah, I'm blowing oh, yeah. all your money on tattoos. I feel that. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Understandable. You see Rackmorn seems to be going over logistics on a clipboard and speaks to a few crew members loading the ship. And he takes notice of you. And he kind of uh, happily walks up and greets you. Ah, good to see a fresh face. You must be Miss... Uh, he looks over his clipboard. Lartillar, if I'm right. Correct. I hope the hustle and bustle ain't causing you no trouble getting your sea legs in order. Or he gestures down to your snake lower half. A tail in this case. Oh, trust me, my tail is very good for the sea. <laughs> very good. If you'd and be you... a helpful lass, I uh, could use a hand or two loading the cannons if you're up to the task at present. Though, no, it's no trouble. Being new blood, I wouldn't want to burden you with too much labor this early on. I much prefer to give chores once we're out to sea and they got nowhere to run. ha 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 ha. Quite frankly, she looks relieved and says, I would be glad to help. Aye, they'll be right over there where the orc and dwarven feller are, are helping around. And he points over right over here. Thank you, Captain. And she will 
Mm -hmm. So you see the dwarf and orc are having trouble uh, despite being very very burly folk and uh, see you slithering along. Would you like to assist? I would. Give me an athletics check, the first roll of the game. Yeah, show show off those snussels. Please work. Snussels. 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 Eight plus seven. Get nice, it. a 15. Okay, you manage to wrap your tail kind of around the kind of cylindrical body of the cannon and start to roll it along with the assistance of the dwarf and the orc, just as you hear the low rumble of it going over the docked wooden panels onto mm -hmm. the ship. Rackmorton nice. gives a hearty nod, and as he looks back over his clipboard, a second figure walks up, and we're going to go a little bit out of order for a good reason, I promise. And <laughs> arriving soon after, we see a fire genasi yeah. walking towards <laughs> this new ship and a new expedition. Eric, go ahead and introduce you yourself if you have anything to plug and who you play. Uh, I would like to first take a, take a shout out to the hijack crew. Hell yeah. <laughs> Love those guys. Hi. Plugging those guys. Oh, hey. Oh, what's up? Um, but yeah, no. I mean, I... Nothing really to plug. But uh, yeah, this is my character, uh, Tibeth, Ocean Song. Uh, she's a fire genasi, and uh, she's she's had some trouble. She's 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 been on the Seven Seas, but not in Savory Company. Uh, but she's trying to recoup all of her losses uh, as well. Um, and that's why she's here. You walk on over, and uh, Rackmorn notices you as well. Ahoy, Miss Ocean Song, over here! He waves you over. Well, hello there. Um, I see you, you're the masterful Tark, as it were. Oh, he puts up one hand on his chest. A bit, a bit too informal there. Although I wouldn't mind getting informal with you. <laughs> he extends his hand. Uh, is she like, what a like side eyes, like, t like grabs his wrist and shakes it. It's like, uh... Hopefully we can keep this strictly professional. He holds his my hand back. Apologies. Oh, I apologize. I apologize myself. I, uh... <laughs> he, he takes his hat off and kind of puts it on his chest and does a little bow. My apologies. Uh, a bit over-friendly with the crew can give me bad manners as a habit. He puts it back on. Well, first Miss Lortilla here, and now you. Uh, it's always nice to have a few fresh crew who's already got some experience. Uh, by the way, Miss Lortilla, he, he shouts back over to the ship. Yes. This here is Miss Ocean Song, the other of our new crew member, Miss Ocean Song, Miss Lortilla. Hi, hello. Good afternoon. Hmm. He looks back over to Tibeth. So, what say you, Miss Ocean Song? Our ship is of approval for you, I hope. A fire genasi is so fond of the sea, I can only assume you're a thrill seeker. Uh, that I am, that I am, Captain. Uh, it, it, it appears ship shape. I've, I've been on worse and I've been on better. Uh, but this will definitely suit us for our, our adventure. Ah, I do hope to not disappoint. <laughs> the next crew member to come along is a large, muscly, gray man. Ian, go ahead and introduce yourself if you have anything to plug, and who you play. Uh, oh, yes, this is uh, Ian. Hi, everyone. Mm -hmm. um, I have nothing to plug uh, as well. I don't do the social medias very much, but uh, um, as far as who I am playing, Vezos Zoraim, at your service. Uh, he is a uh, Goliath, and he is uh, actually doing pretty well for himself right now, uh, but he is uh, coming on this ship. He wants to make a little bit more than he's making now, so... Uh, He's ready for uh, some some map making as a cartographer, and it's going to be good times. Mm -hmm. You're on your way over to the docks and would be greeted by the captain if it weren't for the fact that you accidentally bump into another person of whom you nearly topple, topple over. And as you look at them, a tinge of dread falls over you. Oh no, it's her, the tiefling. <laughs> and... Our last player, Kate, go Hi. ahead and introduce yourself if you have anything to plug and who you play. Hi, I'm Kate. Uh, I'm an, I, I draw stuff. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Tactician Kate. Uh, and I'm playing Honeymoon Langley. Big, big sexy, big sparkly, 
uh, she uh, also got a history of cartography, but methods differ from our our other resident cartographer, and she's got some personal stakes in finding uh, the golden K. So let's 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 see how that shakes out. There we go. So you say we ran into each other? Yes, Physically. you bumped into and each I... <laughs> other like a like a bad anime trope. Uh, and I do want to say, Honeymoon is pretty tall. She's she she always wears heels. So with the with the four inch heels, she's six seven. So she's she's not exactly one foot shorter than Fazo. <laughs> Great. <laughs> so yeah, I imagine Honeymoon mm. was was just walking with a, a gentle sachet, you know, uh, and nearly tottered over. But she's used to the heels, and so she. I imagine when they bump into each other, she stumbles a bit, catches herself, and she says, Oh, please excuse me, I'm so... Sees you, and just kind of raises her eyebrows and just has a very blank face. You see, uh, Phazos looks down at you. You see he slowly face palms. Langley. Mr. Jerame. I take it you're not here for, you know, other reasons other than the large boat. Well, I'd be lying if I said I was. And I can only imagine you're here for the same. Wonderful. I get to spend Itchy. so much time with you. Oh, don't be so dour, uh, Mr. Jerame. She she links to her arm uh, with yours and uh, starts walking. He very startling looks at this and then kind of stiff arms to try to stop, but then kind of sighs a resignation, walks a little bit before pulling very swiftly to get out of it. Yeah. She she just throws a look over her shoulder like a little pout. She says, oh, you're no fun. And she, she walks ahead. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> As you guys do head closer to the docks and the ship, Rackmorn is going over his clipboard, looking around, and he notices the both of you. And he's, he has uh, kind of the face of joy and relief. And he walks up. <laughs> ah, Mr. Dre, Mr. Langley. Good to have you both aboard. I'm happy to see you two are already familiar with each other's company. You could say that. Unfortunately, yes. He, he hears that comment and he's like, Oh, I see. Well, we can get plenty friendly once we set sail. It is likewise a pleasure to meet you, Captain Rackmorn. She extends her hand. Mm, he takes it, and he has a very firm, nice handshake. Uh, Honeymoon has a very, a, a very delicate, dainty <laughs> way of shaking hands. And he shouts out to the boat, Oi! Miss Ocean Song! Miss Lortilla! Here is the last of the new blood. Perhaps you could get well acquainted with each other. Aye, hello there! Honeymoon waves her manicured clawed nails at you guys. You get a wave back. You see Phazos, uh, you know, slowly kind of walks forward uh, and then does a, a nice bow to, to everyone. Phazos Jureim, at your service. Uh, you weren't hearing... so nearly polite when we first met. <laughs> walks up. Honeymoon will, will sashay up the, what is it, the gangplank, uh, and to, to Tibbeth first, and she'll kind of do a, a very dainty curtsy uh, and hold out her hand and say, Honeymoon Langley, it's a pleasure to meet you. Tibet Ocean Song, pleasure to meet you as well. And um, she gives you a, a firmer handshake than you were probably expecting. Yeah, Honeymoon takes in stride and says, oh, I think we're going to get along fabulously. She'll walk around this cannon, very daintily tottering past. Uh, and <laughs> up to... Heels. Yeah, uh, and up to, to Latello. She'll do the same, give a curtsy and say, Honeymoon Langley, it is a, it's a pleasure to meet you. Latello, likewise. Hmm. Yeah, honey, honeymoon gives you an appraising look at at the the snussels. It, it, it's an approving look. <laughs> the snussels. Uh, you is see her flex. To... Oh, honey, honey, honeymoon makes like a little O shape with her mouth and like lifts her hands like, oh my. <laughs> Phazos? Oh yes, Phazos is going to uh, turn to uh, Rackmore uh, just for a moment, Master Captain Rackmore. Why? What will it be, Mr. Jerame? I was just making sure that you are in need of uh, the, the, the services of two cartographers on this trip. What a son of a bitch! <laughs> <laughs> Rackmorn uh, kind of looks back at Honeymoon. I, it seems a bit redundant, but just like how there's two sides to every story, there are two sides to every map. I, 
Uh, very well, I respect your uh, decision there. More eyes, the more accuracy, eh? Could always uh, cross-reference. <laughs> yes, I suppose that is true. Very well, I'll go make uh, nice with the rest of the crew. Agreed. And as Rackmorn is looking over his clipboard, kind of um, looking over the last few things, it seems as though everything's in order. He turns to the boat and just takes in a deep breath. All right, you greedy treasure hunters! We've got a long sea ahead of us, so we've got to be sure all is in order. I want you to quadruple check every port and cannon, every inch of rope, every stitch in the sails. I want to see your hands calloused enough to scratch a hydra. And you see a few of the crew members just like shout out in jubilance, hey! So this is going to be your first skill challenge. It is very Ooh. low stakes. Uh, the only <laughs> risk is uh, the disapproval of your new yourself. captain. <laughs> <laughs> so here is your chance to show off your skills and abilities on a ship. You require five successes. However, two failures will make the captain just kind of like, meh. Mm. Uh, we are going to go ahead and just roll initiative so that we have a turn order. So there are various different cannons and kind of crates and just cargo that needs to be checked and like rolled and make sure they're all in working order and stuff like that. First up, Honeymoon, how would you like to contribute to prepping the ship for this voyage? Well, contrary to Honeymoon's very dreamy sort of air, she's actually quite astute, and so she's going to um, kind of saunter around the ship, uh, keeping a very casual air, but scrutinizing the like how things are placed and uh just everything about the ship very closely i would like to roll perception for this ah all right show me perception okay you are able to point out kind of some mishandled items some pl things placed haphazardly point them, them out to your fellow crew members who may have missed them otherwise congratulations mm -hmm. that was a success thank you like <clears throat> she, she's very like polite like have you missed a spot darling and like kind of like very lightly smacking people on like the backs of the legs with her tail. <laughs> yeah, whatever very, you do, very they're, they're, at first they're like, "Oh, I know my own ship better than some new." Oh, oh, all right. <laughs> Honeymoon gives them a sickly sweet look. <laughs> Next yeah. is Tibet. Mm -hmm. How do you want to contribute uh, to the ship? I feel like that Brooklyn Nine Nine meme of like. Andy Sandberg pointing at the dog saying, do not blow this for us. <laughs> uh, Beth uh, is going to do uh, what she does normally best, and that is scurry up best. the main... Oh, her Tibeth. Oh, um, her is going to scurry up the uh, main flagpole. Or not flagpole, but uh, the... Yeah, up to the crow's nest? Sail. Yeah, up to the crow's nest. All right. And she's going to uh, ensure that everything looks ship -shaped from up there. So I'll be rolling acrobatics for that. Nice. Okay. Get it. Okay. Yes. You you climb on up, nice and fast, to to the impressed look of Captain Rockmorn. You slip a few times as you are not familiar with this ship and kind of the friction on its kind of climbing bars and such. But you are able to make it up there at a very impressive speed. That is another success. Yeah. <laughs> And you do hear a few comments down below as well. It seems like somebody, uh, a few of the crew members were kind of jokingly poking fun at their actual kind of lookout person. Kind of like, ah, oh, you might lose your job, eh? <laughs> Next will be Phazos. How do you All contribute right. to fixing the ship? Uh, Phazos uh, is going to, um, you know, be, be taking a good look around. Um, at, at, at the ship as it's kind of coming together. And he's going to be particularly paying attention to uh, the crew members and seeing which ones aren't really pulling their weight. Uh, and he's mm -hmm. going to um, be, um, you know, trying to uh, just let them know that they're, they, they're being watched. Uh, and they need to make sure they're, they're doing something. <laughs> Is that and an that intimidation I, I hear? Um, it, I was thinking uh, insight for the fact of looking for uh, the 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 people who's actually actions. not doing it. Yeah. Gotcha. Okay. Yes. Yes. Okay. Let's see. How By the way, um, intimidate <gasps> you. You can opt to roll strength for intimidation as well, if you oh, so wish. Really? Good to know. Uh, Good to know. Okay. Unfortunately, that was pretty bad. You look them over. Yeah. You try to glean kind of what's going about. It seems as though some of them seem 
like they're slacking off, but after a second glance, it really is they're just waiting for their partner in help, kind of like for a task that otherwise would not require their hand, but their patience instead. And you can't quite glean what the vibe of this crew is, as you are not too much familiar with them. That is going to be one failure, as Captain mm, Rackmorn sees less. you looking around, seemingly doing nothing. <laughs> Next scoop. is Lotilla. I would like to find someone who seems to be partnerless and help them with whatever they're doing. Okay, yes. Moving stuff, preferably. You, you see a kind of young-looking tiefling, actually. We'll go with the test tiefling uh, <laughs> that we... Hello, test tiefling. ...off-stream. Off uh, he looks like a young lad, maybe no, no uh, older than 20 summers, uh, although he does seem to have at least some experience with the rest of the crew. You can see that he is trying to haul some rope that he is struggling with, that he could really use a hand, but nobody seems to be paying much mind to him. May I be of assistance? He looks up to you. Oh, oh, oh yes, uh, of course. Wonderful. And I <laughs> guess... Can I do another athletics, or do you want a straight strength? Yeah, let's... Uh, <clears throat> another athletics, yeah. Seems like I was the one who gave you the, the prompt this time. I apologize. All right, very Ooh, easily. We're able to bring the rope to their designated locations, kind of lifelines and holding down the sails and such. There's three failures, or rather, not three failures, <laughs> three successes. <laughs> three, God. Three, three successes, sorry. Jesus, God. Two May more. I ask your name? Oh, oh uh, my name. Um, my name Thomas. is Theodore. Theodore. Uh, Hello, Theodore. Uh, uh, nice, nice to meet you, ma'am. I'm Latilla. Uh, nice to meet you, Miss Lotilla. Just imagining her looming over yes. and leering at this fucking guy. <laughs> There's this, like this, this college student. <laughs> <laughs> I am tempting. I am making eye contact. We are communicating. This is how we become friends. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. See, a prepared DM would have names. It's okay. <laughs> Dude, it's anyway, it, I get it. that is three successes. Back to oh. the top, honeymoon. Okay. So, honey. Also, honeymoon definitely was like nearby when Phazos was doing his thing, uh, and she definitely snickered at him within earshot <laughs> when she saw that he flubbed it. <laughs> um, but she is going to kind of go around, and she's gonna head up to, uh, kind of this, the I don't know what the fuck you call it, the yeah, or the 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 the, the wheel? wheel thing. Oh, the wheel. Um. And she's going to start checking on various, like, uh, like, uh, like measurement tools and things like that, basically to make sure that all things ha like that they might encounter in the wild have been sort of accounted for early on. Hmm. Uh, kind of taking into it, kind of seeing what the current path is, uh, wh uh, what she can tell of the winds and stuff, uh, based on that. Okay. Uh, I would like to roll survival. Go ahead and give me a survival. <laughs> no way. Fifteen. All right. All right. You kind of uh, take chart and look it over. You know, you know your cardinal directions. You make sure all is in order. Uh, you. And a cartographer for nothing. Mm hmm. And you make sure. I'll say you do ask around. You know, like if if there yeah. is a map on board and stuff like that, and where the route is going. And you do help with a few little optimizations to the path as well. Go on. As she holds up the map, she looks over it uh, at at Phazos and makes that like the cat face with the knife being held up to it at him. <laughs> <laughs> she glares back. <laughs> the smuggest of smug looks. <laughs> yep, that's me. One more success, and one more success will impress the captain. However, one more failure uh... will make him question his hiring practices. Tibbeth. So no, no pressure, uh... Tibbeth. Yeah, best. thanks. Woo. <laughs> it is up to me then? Yep. Yeah. Uh, so to Beth, now being in the crow's nest, uh, being up here, she is going to uh, ensure that the sails are properly fastened to the main like crossbars and stuff like that, and to ensure that the rope is of strong quality and of like uh, uh, properly tied, as it were. Uh, I would like to use sleight of hand. Ooh. Sleight of hand. All right. Interesting. No whammy, no whammy. Ah! Even. That's going to make it. That is a success. 
Okay, Aww. yep, you fasten them, you slip a little bit as you are, like, <gasps> precariously on the top of the sails and such, but you are able to keep your balance once again. You are not too familiar with the ship, <gasps> but I maybe... a fucking two. <laughs> yeah, you got the plus eight. That's insane. <laughs> oh, dear. But, uh, yeah, you're able to procure it, and Rackborn seems nice and impressed. Well done. Oh, thank God. <sighs> and Rackmorn uh, heads on board and just goes over to Phazos and takes one hand and pats him on the shoulder. <laughs> ah, it'll be all right, lad. You'll be able to show yourself more once we're out to sea. I, I'm sure you're just a little getting warmed up. You call yes. this like, honeymoon is full on cackling at the wheel. <laughs> he is uh, actively ignoring this. Good. <laughs> You called this giant man lad. Besides, I read He's your resume. He's a little resume. boy. <laughs> I only picked the best and I read your resume and I wouldn't have hired you otherwise. Yeah, thank you. I'm glad to, to Beth, be here. <laughs> to Beth overhears this from the crow's nest and she's just thinking to herself, we were supposed to submit resumes. <laughs> honey, huh. honey, honey, honeymoon totters down the deck and calls over. You know, we're still, we're still dark. It's not too late to change your mind. Yes, it is. <laughs> Zella's going Phazos to start pulling looks... in Gangplank really quickly. He, he looks at you and he's just like, exactly. I was thinking maybe you would like to do that. Oh, I'm not the one hold getting... on now. He, like, Rackman holds up his, <laughs> his hands. We're going to be out to sea for quite a while and perhaps enduring some dangers. So at least for the sake of business, I would ask that you cooperate a little bit. Of course, Captain. <laughs> Aye, Captain. Thanks. Yeah, Honeyman is sashayed up to, to Lotella. Uh, just to be like, that was, you are so strong. Oh, thank, thank you me. kindly. But Miss Lortilla, <laughs> I, I do still need to uh, use that. Oh, you're going back down? I just last check over, you know, uh, me darling. Slides it back down. <laughs> All right. <laughs> he walks on off to take one last look at the ship. And as he does, you can see that there is a very ornate and royally dressed elven man who comes over from the inner kind of land, the city, walks on up to him. Hello? And you guys can't quite hear. Actually, um, what is everyone's passive perception? 23. Uh, oh my gosh. Probably has a <laughs> 13. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. 10. <laughs> yeah, 13. But I'm also up way the fuck up here, so I'm not going to hear anything. Right, right, right. It's me. I'm the designated nuisance for the campaign. Yay! Yeah! So they try, they try to walk out of earshot, but you can hear a few whispers. And, mm -hmm. um... Honeyman is hardcore eavesdropping. Specific... Yeah, you're oh, gonna yeah. actively listen in? Yes. You specifically she, she hear... She leans casually. You, you hear, Sorry. like, a few kind of arguments and stuff. You, he, you can see that Rackmorn looks very perturbed. He looks upset, like, staring daggers at this elf. And the elven man just Ooh. seems very calculated, very cold. He's standing still, unemotive, saying a string of words very quickly to Rackmorn. You catch a few snippets, uh, including your, your ship is now Sea Trade Company property. Oh. And Rackmorn just, like, gritting his teeth. And he hands him a slip of paper, uh, a kind of a, a parchment with a very ornate stamp on it. Mm. And he just clutches it in his hand. And the elven man walks off. Oh. And you can hear Rackmorn, as he was walking off, you can hear Rackmorn, you can't do this. You, I'll... <clears throat> Mm. He stuffs the part. Uh, he he just like stuffs the parchment in his pocket, and tries to regain his composure. Goes tries to go back to his just like more professional, jo jovialian self, and walks back on board. Claps his hand. All right, crew, are we all ready to set sail? Hi, Captain. I believe so, Captain. Ready yes. as will ever be. Hi. And you guys do so. Da -da 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 -da. Bing bong. The ship leaves the dock, heading towards the horizon. A few miles out from shore, once the docks and land you set out from have fallen behind the horizon, 
Ooh. Here we are. Oh, I see a portrait. <laughs> In the meantime, you do have some downtime to wander about, wander about, talk amongst yourselves. Uh, designated downtime, I guess. <laughs> Honeymoon is is one hundred percent bothering Lotilla. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Lotilla making her way up the stairs. Oh, okay, hello. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Bezos is uh, glad that at least it's not him right now. <laughs> oh, she'll get to you later, don't worry. Uh, okay, so you said you were going to go annoy Lotilla. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, just, just in some downtime. Honeymoon is just, um, like, asking her stuff like, you know, where are you from? What are you, what you doing on the ship? Uh, Can I have your number? Uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> Uh, do you like to swim much since you have the since you look quite uh, suitable to aquatics I don't fucking know she would word it better I am very good at swimming I'm more from the inland technically Mm. it's where I was hatched but I am a sea crate I am suited for the sea I see yeah I didn't mean to do that (laughs) (laughs) And what brings you on the ship? Because Mr. Jerain and I are the cartographers, although I think it's quite clear which one of us is the superior. Um, so I'm just curious um, as to what piqued the captain's interest in bringing you aboard. You see her pull two tridents from her back. Muscle. Oh. And quite some good muscles they are indeed, I must say. <laughs> and if the ship goes down, I can get a few people to land at least. Well, that's another way to look at it, I suppose. Yeah, Honeymoon is just kind of like... Didn't expect you to go there, but cool. <laughs> um, and Hon- Honeymoon kind of... Kind of twirls her hair a little bit and she says... I'm... Uh, and, and, well, okay, I was debating if she would bring up the fact that she can fucking shapeshift, but no, she it, she probably would just... That's later. Yeah, that's later. <laughs> so yeah, she's just... She's just she's just making a gal pal. She'll get to Tibbeth, and then she'll go bother Jerame. Or, okay. Uh, While that's happening, uh, Tibeth is gonna go over to Bezos and bother him. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> because uh, she noticed that this sleek-suited man is staying on the ship instead of, you know, perusing and then leaving. Mm-hmm. So she's gonna saunter on up. Hello, uh, Thezos, was it? Jerame? He holds up a, a finger uh, as he is currently uh, writing down uh, something in his notes as he kind of closes his book, turns to you, and is just like, um, yes, uh, Thezos Jerame, at your service. You are uh, Tibeth, I believe? Tibeth, Ocean Song. Tibeth. Um, I, I was wondering. Uh, pardon, pardon my question, but you don't seem that suited for an ocean travel, given your current uh, attire. He, Are you used uh, to this? He he looks down at what he's wearing. He kind of looks it around at the rest of the crew. I suppose I'm not. You do uh, seem a bit out of place, I will say. Um, is this your first time traveling overseas? Uh, long distance, yes. I've I've ridden boat before, but not uh, as far as I'm assuming the Golden K would be. Mm, I see, I see. I take it it is not your first time, given your acrobatics earlier. Uh, no, no. I, I would like to think that I'm a little well-versed on a ship. But, um, I am curious. What, what exactly do you do? I am a cartographer. I map the world as I see it and as I know it. I take very accurate and precise measurements of the natural world in front of us, unlike a certain cartographer there who looks to the skies for answers that he will never find. You better stop talking shit or you're gonna get hit. <laughs> uh, it do- does he, like, slowly, like, lean over to Beth's shoulder to, like, eye at her? Yes. Um, <laughs> I, uh, um, honeymoon? Cool. Uh, so Tibeth kind of like follows your gaze for a second. I say, ah, I see. So we have two cartographers. Yes, very confusing. I know. I tried to petition the captain to to let her go, but alas, he was very straightforward. He wanted both of us. 
So she she glances at, again once more at your attire up and down, and then looks over at Honeymoon and at hers, well, and it's like, yeah, she equally formally dressed, not for yeah. ship, ship stuff. <laughs> and I'm and, and she just kind of sits there for a second. Very interesting choices. Yes, I, I would say. <laughs> Uh, well, if you need any help getting your sea legs, uh, suited, uh, I have a handful of tips as somebody who was originally not suited for the sea life, as you can tell, and she, like, gestures to her, uh, oh, okay. hair. Um, he, yeah, he, he, he nods and just like, uh, yes, you may have noticed by the rails so I can support myself. Uh, yes. I will gladly um, take any tips. First tip. Probably best not to go under deck. None of none of the ceiling will be low enough, even if you crawled, most likely. Um, that That's tip number one. And tip number two, uh, you know, it's a large sea. If, you know, if, if you are feeling a little sick, you know, the fish won't mind. So uh, I'll be off. Good luck. <laughs> Good. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Wonderful. <sighs> he goes back to charting the uh the the waters as we're going through them mm -hmm. while you are all kind of talking amongst yourselves and some time passes by the captain uh kind of looking through his spyglass back towards the shore after it disappears over the horizon kind of gives a little hearty nod and uh just calls out and uh just goes oi captain on deck and everybody stands at attention and shuts up <laughs> Tabeth knows the, the procedure and she uh, stands firm at attention. I tell her what as well. She's at the f at 6 6 now. And Honeymoon just looks over at him. Uh, <laughs> Fezos finishes one more line and then turns to look. And then while they do, you hear a few like, like held in breaths, like. <clears throat> and then everyone starts laughing. And uh, and Rackmorn just like takes off his hat and kind of strokes the top of his head. Ha ha ha! Always get some. All right, you oh, bastards, dear. back to business. Uh, don't pay them no mind. Just a fun little initiation to get you to tense your shoulders a bit. Oh, Otilla comes down to look in his face. Appreciated. Ah, <laughs> uh, <laughs> just letting you know that we don't, we ain't too keen too much on procedure here. That don't matter until we really need it. So don't worry too much about formality, uh, formalities, I. But you know. new uh, bloods, I am gonna have to <laughs> go over everything with you. So, honey, honey, when Sasha is up. <laughs> yeah, Tibeth, uh, uh hesitantly relaxes because uh, she she's ex she's more expecting of uh, you know orderly yeah. conduct, as it were. <laughs> <laughs> or subordination, at least. Mm -hmm. uh, so she'll she'll come on over. Yep. Uh, he makes some room for all of you. And uh, he kind of gestures over. Firstly, I wanted to introduce you to my right hand and the helms person. This is Sharn Redsnout, Miss Redsnout. And you can see an orcish woman Hello? in some very regal attire <laughs> and some kind of muted blonde hair kind of going down her side. She gives a little salute. Nice to meet you, new bloods. Honeymoon, whore that she is, gives her a very <laughs> thorough look up and down uh, and gives her a, a, very, a very coy smile and says, the pleasure is all ours. She'll be the one in charge of holding the ship down while I'm out and if anything were to happen to me. So, if all goes to the shitter, as they say, you'll be listening to her, understand? Aye, Captain. Yes, Captain. Aye. So... I wanted to touch base with our freshies, considering you're the newest lot of them. I'm guessing you have a few questions regarding our quarry. Uh, a few, yeah. You could say that. All right, let's hear them. Well, I think the first and most pressing is, um, how do you know where we're going? Uh, isn't that so, that's sort of the whole thing, is that it's quite difficult to find... And it hasn't been mapped. I understandable. Hells, if I heard some royal arse was commissioning a ship to travel to an island what few can even claim to be real, uh, I know I'd ask what the catch was as well. Mm -hmm. But even if it were real, just a bag of money and a mark on a map wouldn't be enough for me to waste a my month finding a rumor. And it seemed that the noble agreed and handed me this. 
and Rackmorn pulls out of his coat a small booklet with strange runes on the cover. It seems to be markings in Abyssal. Oh, I speak hi. Abyssal. Oh, you speak oh, Abyssal. I have okay. on my sage background. Okay. Uh, it's it's a very old dialect, but you can make out a few of the words. It seems to say something along the lines. I have Abyssal as well. Oh, sick. Oh, it seems to say something along the lines of Outer Sea's Gate. Ooh. Um, Interesting runes. What is that, Captain? Ah. So... This book can conjure portals in the water like a maelstrom. Just as I was getting ready to turn down the noble, he pulls this wee thing and makes a whirlpool. Then that wrecks a few fishing boats, as we'll say. Demonstrates again by dropping a sack of gold he planned to pay me. Says some magic words and pops it right back out out of the water like it's a bag of holding. Apparently this will be the key to the K. I'll be holding on to this for safekeeping, but... Whatever happens, this book is our key into and out of that place. And if I end up making an early check into the briny deep, it is the highest priority that this book is kept safe. Aye? Aye, Captain. No oh. understood. Honeymoon will remember that. It doesn't much Captain matter who reads it, so long as it's read at the specific spot. The portal should open. If the captain is putting away the book after showing it to us, uh, Tabeth is going to make a mental note of exactly which pocket and what side of his chest he's putting it yep. into. He puts it in the left kind of side of his chest into his jacket pocket. And he doesn't seem to make an effort of hiding it either. In fact... No, no uh, just in case he needs to uh, lift it off his right, 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 yeah. He, he noticed you, you, like, looking over. Oh, yes, of course, right here. And he, he opens his jacket, and you can see uh, not only the booklet, but you see two daggers, three pistols, and a wow. little half-eaten apple. Oh. <laughs> That's going to rot. Them some deep pockets, Captain. He'll finish. Aye. <laughs> Wouldn't you get lint on that? That's just extra protein. Ah, he points remember. over at Tibeth. Oh, she understands. <laughs> Gotta harden the stomach so you can be a hardened sailor for the seas. Captain. Hey, we take what we can get out on the seas. Hi, he, he pulls it out. You can see that there's like, there's like a few pieces of lint and cloth, and he bites into it. <laughs> and honeymoon. you see some of the juices fall over his lips. A honeymoon barely conceals a wince. <laughs> <laughs> and he stuffs it back into his jacket. <laughs> Yummy. Amazing. Captain? Aye. That's two quick references to your meeting an untimely demise. Are you okay? I am all right. I appreciate the concern, Miss Lortilla. It's just that this place is rumored to be dangerous. What few have returned have accounts of magical monsters none this realm has seen. The K itself is apparently a world out of our own. The outer sea, as mentioned by this book. Constellations never seen, a horizon with no end. Honeymoon perks up. (laughs) I was about to say, this sounds right up Honeymoon's Alley, huh? And an island with a volcano what spews smokestacks of honey yellow. Hmm. They say that is the heart of the island where all the gold is being held. Seems a bit Uh, on the nose that a volcano on an island of treasure should erupt gold. I, I guess we'll see for ourselves. Worst comes to worst, this book is unlike I, any I've seen, and it will fetch a pretty penny on the market. I'll sell it and distribute the funds amongst the crew. Sounds like a solid enough plan to me. I'm sure in the end we'll all get our fair due. Indeed. Aye. And, and, Captain, if I may ask. Aye, Miss Ocean Song. Is the noble family and all aboard, are we the only ones that know about this... I we should be. That's why I wanted to make sure that we were out of earshot. Even I'm if just... the place is all rumors and none believe its existence, we wouldn't want any prying eyes possibly messing with our procedure. No, no, of course not. I, I was just making sure, you know, there's plenty of pirates out on the seas, and I was just in, 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 ensuring that we wouldn't run into any trouble by loose lips. Just as you say that, because comedic timing is great, uh, (laughs) (laughs) the crow's nest shouts out, Captain! 
Hi, Greyston! And the crow's nest shouts out, The water, Captain! And he points, and Rackmorn kind of walks on over to the uh, starboard side of the deck and kind of squints his eyes. I don't see nothing! Honeymoon will also sashay over there. Gryston, have you been drinking? And uh, <laughs> Gryston up in the crow's nest. No, Captain, I swear. And Honeymoon, oh. uh, would you like to make a... Actually, your passive perception is so freakishly high. <laughs> you can see an arcane disturbance in the water. Oh. Very, very subtle. Kind of over here. Large. Massive. Oh, wait, I didn't see which way you pointed. Uh, or just like, further, oh, further okay. to the starboard side. Over yeah. here. Honeymoon, honeymoon kind of leans over, uh, eyes widen slightly, and she says, No, Captain, I, I see it too. Something is out there. Something quite large. Hmm. Gryston, raise colors! And you see Gryston raise up the flag, uh, showing the the sigil of Belknus. Oh. I thought it was going to be one of those fucking, like, treasure planet moments where it's, it's a pirate Roger. symbol. No. Yeah, it's like oh. cross bones. <laughs> Surprise! You can show yourselves, he shouts out to the the starboard side of the ship. And, do do do, it reveals itself. Oh. Boosh, you see Whoa. another ship reveal Holy itself oh. from oh. being, you can see that there is a drow right here that drops a large incantation. You see their hands are shaking very heavily. Mmm. And uh, you hear someone using thaumaturgy shouting out, and they have cannons aimed straight at the ship. You, you hear a voice call out, Captain Rackmorn, you have a Yuan-Ti aboard your ship that has committed crimes against royalty. Hot. We will require you to hand her over so that you can continue your privateer. If need be, we are willing to pay a ransom. And he turns back to look at Lotilla. Lotilla looks confused, I did. Yeah, I think we all do. <laughs> yeah, Tibeth looks at Lotilla. What did you do? I wish I knew. Uh, uh, and Rackmorn kind of walks over, and he just kind of leans in and whispers, You wouldn't have uh, caused, made any enemies in your past, have you? Back home? Not here. Hmm. Uh, if I may, uh, Honeymoon will yell back with thaumaturgy. Um, could you be more specific about what crime it is exactly? Um, because there seems to be a bit of confusion over here. <laughs> <laughs> the thaumaturgy voice... Uh, oh, Phazos, you wanted to do something? Uh, yeah, Phazos is uh, going to be uh, trying to kind of uh, get from the inflection of the thaumaturgy voice whether or not they're telling... Uh, they're, they're, they're saying what they're meaning. You can give so. me an insight. Okay. Come on. Darn it. Oh, okay. come on. Why am I rolling so bad? Oh, it, seems, no. it seems like a very business voice. Like, they're using their retail voice right now. Uh, gotcha. This isn't revenge. This is just, we got sent out here. <laughs> and you hear the thaumaturgy voice come back. The details of her imprisonment are none of your concern. Honeymoon thaumaturgy's back. No, I sort of think they are, given you have cannons pointed at us. And also the fact that she's aboard our ship, so I would very much like to know what kind of danger we're in, regardless. Honeymoon relays exactly what you said back at thaumaturgy for you. <laughs> uh, and Rackmorn just kind of looks, yeah, I'm not sure they're giving enough details for me to be convinced. Besides... I paid good money for this crewmate, and she's a right hand with her muscles. She, he gives a little <laughs> thumbs up. Could be good for logging she, things around once we find that treasure, I. She nods, just yes, yes, it will be. And Rackmorn comes back and says, "Is there? Are you sure there's no information you can provide regarding the capture of this Yuan T? Could they at least say my name? See if they have the right one T. Do you say that? Yeah, it's a honeymoon. I'm gonna move over. Yeah, honeymoon will thaumaturge back. Can you at least give us the name of this Yuan-Ti? 
Give me a persuasion. All right. Oh! oh ah! No! <laughs> Had to happen sometime. Yup. Ah, Yikes. that's a nat one. They're not impressed by my tottering. <laughs> you will get all your information once she is in manacles and on our ship. Until then, you are under threat of treason. We will give you one treason. minute to hand her over or we will be forced to open fire on your ship. Treason. Mm. Uh, kind of treasonous. What, what, what flag are they are they yeah. uh, leaving? Uh, uh, they are, they don't have a flag up. Okay. Uh, hmm. Joseph, with your permission, could I perhaps like either with my passive or role perception to try to make out any particular details of their gear or their clothes that might give hints as to like maybe if they're actually pirates? Yes, you may. <laughs> All right. Come here. Yeah. Pretty wow. good. Oh, all right. Nice. That's eight times better than my persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> well, Tilly, you wanted to do something with Tibeth? Yes. Tibeth, sorry. Yes. Yes. Tibeth, could you come here? Sure. I'm going to unhinge I'm, I'm... my jaw and eat you. No! <laughs> uh, I, I, I'll, I'll be completely transparent. I am a little concerned for my safety, uh, regardless of the situation here. Um, I'll, I'll do my best to trust you here. Thank you. Uh, can I, in a whispered tone, I have something that will look like manacles, but I can get rid of it. I want to go over to say, as though we are pretending to go, go over there, and then I'm just going to fall overboard. <laughs> that sounds brilliant, but also, are you sure you can catch up with the ship? Yes. Baby goes fast. <laughs> Already? I'm slow uh, and mad, not in the ocean. Uh, Tibet, uh, Tibet doesn't have thaumaturgy, but she's been on the seas with other pirates for a while. Mm -hmm. um, so she leans over the, the, the railing and shouts, Oi! We'll give you the, we'll give you the, oh, the one that? tea if you can, you know, come over here so that we're not just plopping her into the ocean. You can give me a persuasion now. Also, uh, did I notice anything from my Persepi? Oh, yes. I will give you that after the persuasion. Okay. Your perception. Ouch. You can see that they have kind of a piece of parchment in their hand uh, that it seems almost like they're reading it out, the person who is shouting out thaumaturgy, uh, which is this human over here. And uh, you can see that they have this parchment, and it seems like that you can get a glance of a sigil that is not of Belkinus. It's a different country. Interesting. Honeymoon uh, thaumaturges over. Um, you say you're, what, you're with the Belkinus royalty, yes? We did not say we are of royalty of Belkinus. With them is what I said. Honeymoon <laughs> says that. Honey <laughs> Honeymoon is annoyed. No, we are not with the royalty of Belkinus. Can you just pull your ship up here so we can give you the one tea already? <laughs> Very well. We thank you for your cooperation. And yeah. we're going into this with too little information. And I'm going to grab, whoops, uh, grab the ship. And it's, uh, and actually, when you say that, uh, Rackmorn just comes up and uh, kind of butts in. Hold on now. This is my crew. You have a convincing okay. plan here. Yes. Yes. Lotilla says that she has fake manacles she can put herself into, and then she can throw herself overboard and swim back to us later. Um, yeah, Honeymoon leans in and says to Lotilla, if you can while you're over there, that human, and she points him out, uh, see if you could grab his scroll. It might give us some details. Honeymoon, I wasn't going on the ship. Just mm -hmm. in the well, trade-off, I was going to fall. Well, that wasn't clear to me. I, that was also not like clear to, to me either. But no, it's quite all right. <laughs> oh, hello. Hmm? All right, so I was looking at Faze. <laughs> Faze's Duran was suddenly there, and I was like, "Oh, hello." So you give the confirmation for the ship, and Rackmorn nods on over to Sharn, and their ship slowly heads over, and they put down. They're getting ready to put down a gangplank. When do you want to fall in the water? 
Okay, so may I borrow your imposing size? Uh, <laughs> sure. What? Okay. Give me your hands. <laughs> he gives his hands. She puts hers in yours, and suddenly there's fire manacles around her her hands. Oh. Huh? Convincing. Mm-hmm. Oh, we, we we're good now. This is that's enough. Yes, thank you. All right. He quickly retreat, retreats his hands and brushes them off. <laughs> All right. Which way is the gangplank? Uh, here, let me draw it, because I don't actually have a gangplank thing. It's going to be purple for some reason. Cool. Okay. Amazing. They lay it down. Uh... <laughs> Honeymoon, I want you to push me. Um, Honeymoon, for a sec, she's like, you know that meme comic of like a guy like raising a hand with a finger and then putting it down on the next one? Like, <laughs> mm. Honeymoon kind of does that, and then she's like, if you insist, and she totters up behind you and gives you a shove, which is not very hard because her strength is eight. She, f- it's fine because Latilla's is just gonna intentionally fail it and shoo. Okay, are you trying to make it look oh. convincing? Uh, do you want me yes. to roll a performance? It, not if you're it, not if you don't care about trying to convince them. Ah, uh, I mean, I could do it if you want. I yeah. was about to say, I'm, I'm doing the best. If performance is gonna be exemplary. way better than mine. So yeah. she's going to put on a show of, oh my god, Stay, she just fell off! Fell over! Okay. <laughs> what can I say? I'm just too cutthroat. <laughs> yeah, Tabeth, give me a performance. <laughs> oh my yeah. god. Oh, oh my god, god you just shoved her right off the... the how she, we, she, she was going what? to put my entire endeavor at risk. Uh, you you can see the, the yeah, crew back on this ship are like, oh, come on. What? And the human's like, well, stop. Don't just stand there. Someone get her. Down, down, down. And she, uh, uh, at, at that proclamation, Tabeth just like gestures to herself. It's like, yeah, I'll get right on that, won't I? Uh, <laughs> no, not you. Oh, whoops. I moved the ship. <laughs> Are you actually going to jump in for her? <laughs> Me? No. Yeah, we're not fucking going. <laughs> oh, I'm, I, I will die, actually. The human walks over um, and just kind of like yells at a few of his subordinates. And you can see the, uh, what is this? This is a bugbear? Yes, the bugbear jumps in. Just like poosh into the water. Okay. And you can see uh, he's trying to swim towards you. Uh, Shoop. 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 <laughs> Goodbye. So he... <laughs> Good luck with that, my friend. <laughs> what is your swim speed? I don't think we ever clarified, but sea snakes are fast. <laughs> well, we didn't clarify, but I'm going to say it's 30 because that's a standard. That's fair. Um, that's fair to me. So he, he tries to swim towards you. Are you swimming away immediately? Uh, once she hears another splash, she's gone. Gone. Uh, okay. I think so- she's actually just going to attach herself to the front. Like, underneath the boat. Okay, so he is going to chase you. We might need to roll initiative for this. How heavy is he? Well. Sorry, no, I just like, what does he look like? Can I do a perception? Uh, You can see that there's a large kind of a very hairy man that jumped into the water chasing after you. Gotcha. So put yourself back where you were real quick. Okay, sorry. Yeah. So you just (laughs) didn't get a chance to figure out. I had to hash that out. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. He goes to jump towards you and he before you are going to get away because he's not able to grab you Mm -hmm. but you said you wanted to do a perception on him yeah just well yeah go ahead let's see okay so perception while swimming away i will say will disadvantage disadvantage yeah that's right bubbles it's not super high anyway Mm -hmm. Ooh. yeah you can't glean much aside from there is a body in the water now so the first time we'll, showed a thirteen. Weird. We'll take. Let's see. I was not anticipating this. Can you tell? <laughs> As they cool. see the body in the water swim down, you can see that the human over here is going to jump in the water now as well and try mm-hmm. to pincer you. But I'm just going underneath the boat. Under the boat. Yeah. Okay. They're going to try. Let me see how well they're. Oh, crap. Because they are, they are sailors. They are swimmers. Mm-hmm. Give me, because you're you're being chased. Mm-hmm. Give me, an athletics, actually, because they're gonna try and push themselves. Like I assume you're both gonna be like water dashing. 
But okay. of course, you know. Okay, yeah, you avoid them very easily. <laughs> and so much so that as they try to attempt to catch up to you, they just kind of bump their heads on like the side of the boat. And they do <laughs> have to come up for air. And they, and yeah, you make it to where you're going. So you can put yourself there now. Okay. Probably still below the boat. Mm -hmm. I'm just going to say like right about Below there. the boat, yeah. Okay. So uh, the two climb back on the ship and the fear bulg goes up to the human. She went under the ship, Captain. The human starts to walk on the gangplank and kind of looks at Rackmorn. I hope you don't mind. And Rackmorn looks to the rest of you, like, kind of like, at, wondering, like, what now? <laughs> Honeyman, Honeyman will step aside uh, and she'll, she'll look at the captain and just say, by all means. The captain nods, looks over to the human, nods at him. And there's more crew on the boat. I was just not anticipating them to dock. Uh, just, mm -hmm. just pretend there's more crew on their boat. He brings a small team on. Mm. Uh, and you can see they are very heavily armed with some equipment that doesn't look like it's from, again, this country. Mm -hmm. And they walk on over, starting to look on the sides of the boat and stuff for La Tilla. And the human just kind of yells out, Keep searching! She can't be under there forever. And you can see the crew no kind of, the, the rest of the crew looks a little miffed. Like they, they're like, you know, crossing their arms, looking, they're talking amongst themselves. Like, how, mm -hmm. could, how could these guys be let onto our ship? Yeah. And they all look at the captain and the captain looks at you and he could just whispers, I hope there is a plan here. Bezos <laughs> uh, gives kind of a, a curt nod as a non-answer. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I'm honey. Just going to kind of quickly move up to the to the other group mm -hmm. uh, and go to Tibet. Actually, um, do we have a plan? I sort of assumed we were just going to wait. This them is out. as far as the one T got us. Great. I'll be honest. Okay. Well, they can't fire their weapons at us if they're on their own. Sh uh, they're on our ship. What if we just leave? But we can fire our weapons at them. I mean, I suppose we could fire our weapons at them. We still don't know if they are uh, truly with some sort of royalty, right? Yeah. Speaking of, uh, Honeymoon is going to make her way to that uh, that human with, the, or actually the Drow who was talking. Um, where is he? Uh, the Drow. Oh, geez, it sucks that I have two Drow on the ship. Uh, he's <laughs> over here. Okay. Oh, you could tent. Could you tent the other guys so we have? Yes, here I'll, I'll tent tent them all. They they are essenced with strawberry. Good. <laughs> you approach the drow. So, yeah. What do you say? Honeymoon walks up and she says, "Well, clearly that hand that handoff didn't go quite as planned, but I was hoping perhaps maybe you could share a little bit more since we were going to comply. At least the name of this person you're after." Oh, uh, the captain said not to divulge information. Oh, but the captain's not listening, is he? Give me a persuasion. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Uh, I'm not. Per it's not a druid skill, so. Oh, oh no. Uh, oh, damn. Uh, sorry, ma'am. Uh, you're very well dressed, though, but the uh, captain can't, can't uh, say not to, you know, give it to any of the crew. Okay. <laughs> and um, could you point out which, which one of you is your captain for me, please? Uh, that one, the human over there. Uh, I see. Captain James. Thank you. And she, she, she'll, she'll sashay past him and give him like a, a lingering touch, like brush on the shoulder with her hand as she goes. Ooh, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Honeymoon is here to whore it up. I don't know how else to tell you. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And you can see the human is, he's very quickly losing his patience as he's looking around. He seems mm -hmm. to be dressed in some kind of regal robes of some kind. Uh, again, unfamiliar to you in style. She will, she'll approach, not get too close, and just be like, you know, given how upset you're getting over one escape to on tea, I'm really very curious to know what exactly, what exact trouble it is she caused. He turns to you, and you, you notice when he does that he's got a very peculiar necklace. Oh? With a sigil, seems one, of a, you know, again, the country that they are from. Okay. It is not a concern to you, madam. 
Oh, I would beg to differ, though, seeing as I was going to be working with her and travelling on the same ship for some time. What matters is that if you do not assist in handing her over to us, you're complicit in her crimes. Which are what, exactly? Crimes. You won't, you won't even tell us that much. How are we supposed to know what's being complicit and what's not? He narrows his eyes. Fine. She has crimes against the Yuan-Ti World Dominion. We are servants on their behalf, and we are here to capture her and bring her back for a trial. Honeymoon kind of arches an eyebrow. I... <clears throat> I don't suppose you'd tell me a trial for what, would you? He narrows his eyes and says nothing. Ah, oh, it's all right. I figured as much. Yeah, she kind of goes over and takes a look uh, just over the water and says, Hmm, I don't know if you'll be able to catch her, though. She seemed like quite the strong swimmer. He just keeps looking. Um, mm -hmm. can, um can I um, take a moment here? Go ahead. Uh, Tabeth is going to go up to the captain. She's going to whisper into his ear. She's going to say, So, that captain and a decently sized portion of their crew is here on our ship right now, right? Aye. So, if we were to pull away from their gangplank, would they be liable to shoot at us? Aye. <laughs> what if we scuttled the ship first? <laughs> He has a little grin. Aye. <laughs> what is scuttling me? You, you did sink. say... Oh. Sink. Okay. You did say that you created a whirlpool with your book last time? Aye. Um, a wee one. Oh, a wee one. Could it be bigger? <laughs> Perhaps. Given enough time. Given enough time. I'd say we have a good bit of time just... Looking around for Latilla right now. Very well. I like your idea, Miss Ocean Song. And he walks I on will... over to the. Yeah, you, you were going to say something? I, was... I will uh, do my best to put on the show for these fine people that have taken a, aboard our ship. Aye. He walks on <laughs> over, pulls out his handy dandy notebook. <laughs> and you can hear him say, chanting a few words. Like he looks, he tries to pretend like he's just reading, like from a, just a, an inconspicuous book. Yeah. And you can already <laughs> see kind of a little bit of water rippling around their ship. Uh, Tibeth is going to uh, go over kind of closest to the captain, like in between these two guys here. Um, and she's going to like half-heartedly like glance over and then like do a double take and then go, Oi, there she is over the water. And she's going to point fucking over here <laughs> your choice of persuasion or performance actually performance. no deception performance okay. or deception uh hey, if guess I'm... what either works uh, <laughs> hey. i was gonna ask if i could use druidcraft to help and like give her advantage you know what yes yeah make um, it like, honeymoon... a little, like a little splashing yeah. or something honeymoon sees what you're doing and just very surreptitiously makes some little wavies in the water okay <laughs> you do so and the captain, the human. Actually, you can roll again. Let's see how high you get, because you yeah. get advantage from the druidcraft. Oh, I can roll again. Yep. Sick. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Well, we'll go with the sixteen right. then. I have expertise in acrobatics, deception, performance, <laughs> and sleight of hand. Yeah. Pretty good. Wow. Pretty Still pod. impressive. Uh, mm -hmm. Captain, uh, the captain sees it, and he points it out. Oh, come on! There she is. Shoot her. And. Shoot her. <laughs> Did you not want her alive to bring it back for a trial? She'll live. <laughs> and they pull out kind that's, that's of flint locks and start shooting into the water. You can see that they, as they hit the water, they seem to have like a, a magical glow about them, continuing to project Ooh. them through. Latilla sees this. It's just like, oh, I'm just drifting over here. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to take a breath and I'm going she... back down. <laughs> Tibet, Tibet like looks wildly between the people shooting and... Um, she she's like, how are you all missing? She's right there. Are you blind? <laughs> <laughs> I'm trying my best, woman. <laughs> and she's gonna like, g give me that, and she's gonna try to take the, the flintlock from the dragonborn next to her. Uh, you from the dragonborn? He's like, uh, yeah. Uh, he he's just like, hey, that's my gun. Uh -huh. <laughs> she's gonna take it. She's gonna cock it, and like with like eagle eye precision, shoot exactly into where the splashing is. Hmm. 
Bing bong. So it, I presume it continues to go. And while this is happening, Rackmorn over here mm -hmm. uh, just uh, finishes his little chant. And you can see a little whirlpool. And you can see that the ship, their other ship, is listing a bit. <laughs> <laughs> However, the crew doesn't seem to take notice as they they feel as though that it's just typical, you know, waves and stuff. And the captain calls out to the human, Oi, uh, human captain, it appears your ship has been caught in a little wee trouble. And the human captain looks back and he says, Everyone back to the ship! And <laughs> they all start to run. <laughs> kind of jumping on the gang, the shaky gangplank, and slip back onto their ship. Uh, Rackmorn winks at his helmswoman, and uh, she kind of like shouts out to the rest of the crew. And the sails are set again as the other ship starts to just slowly sink. Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> uh. Rackmorn uh, drops his hat in a little uh, kind of goodbye. <laughs> Kick the gangplank. Uh. As you guys pass them by. Well done. Yay! Hell yeah. And uh, Lotilla, you kind of feel the rush of water pushing you against the boat, signifying mm -hmm. that it is now moving. Yes, I'm going to... Do we have lifeboats? We do, yes. Uh, I just didn't bother to draw them. That's fine. I just want to get to like where one would be and like... Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's, make my there's way stuff up. that allows you to uh, climb back up. Cool. Just slither up out of the water. Rackmorn walks up, and you can hear, you can see, like, the rest of the crew, like, chanting and cheering, and you see a few of them kind of pat you on the side and, like, kind of, like, gentle punch on the shoulder of you, Lotilla. Oh. Oh. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> does, she, does she punch them back playfully and it bruises? <laughs> <laughs> no, that's like a gentle pat on the top of the head. <laughs> that probably is too hard, but there is an attempt. And you see Rackmorn walking up, uh, hands on his hips. Oh, that was mighty fine work. You're not too shabby yourself, Captain. I'd like to put a bit of trust in me, crew. Who got them to shoot the water? Uh, that would have been to Beth. Indeed. Uh, oh, I, yeah. I, I figured, you know, um, if you're at the bow, or that's where you would most likely go, uh, we could just have them shoot off randomly over there and um while while the captain worked his literal magic <laughs> and to beth oh. since you had the gun while they were darting back to their own boat you know <laughs> you, you now have a magical yeah, flintlock yeah. pistol <laughs> very nice oh silly me they seem to have forgotten this <laughs> after that little kerfuffle you guys continue to <laughs> sail ahead and uh you know make make friendly with some of the crew yeah, uh, uh, Honeymoon does want to talk to Lotilla. She is over by the side of the boat, squeezing her hair out over the side. Mm -hmm. uh, Honeymoon will sashay up, uh, see you kind of wringing your hat and say, let me give you a hand with that, dear. And she'll drew and craft some of the water out. Oh, thank you. Every time you come up behind her, I think that you step on her tail, but I'm going to say that that's probably not happening. <laughs> no, honey Honeymoon is graceful. Good deal. Um, she definitely has, she definitely like, I w well, she doesn't almost do it. She notices it. Her mm -hmm. passive perception is insane. It's true. But she, she like, hops over it daintily, as you do. <laughs> um, and as she's kind of, like, wicking the water away, she says, So, I got a word in with that human captain of the, the ship we sank, and he was reticent when it came to details about who exactly they were after, besides them being a yuan -T. But he did mention something about crimes against the yuan Dominion. And I am just curious if... If that's... Uh, if that does actually have anything to do with you. My crimes? I left. If there are any. Oh. I... Honeymoon kind of scrunches her brow a little and says, I admit I'm not the most well-versed in yuan -T. Society, but I hardly think leaving should be a crime punishable by both uh, pursuit and imprisonment. She kind of gives you an expectant look. She is glaring at the ocean. Mm -hmm. She cannot blink. 
<laughs> she doesn't have eyelids? No. What? Oh, she's a, she's a snursen. Oh yeah. my god. Okay. Eventually she does look back at you. Most Wanty are not particularly fond of anything that isn't Wanty. Mm. And either you are for the cause or you are against it. Honeymoon kind of nods her head a little bit and she says, I suppose that makes sense enough, but I still don't quite understand why that would merit an entire ship coming to chase you. She looks puzzled at this point as well. I don't think it does either. I don't know what changed. Interesting. Oh. She, uh, yeah, Honeyman just kind of looks longingly over her shoulder. She's like, oh, I should have nicked that parchment when I had the chance. Oh. She looks oh, around the, um, and she goes, if anything, I should have been the one for revenge. And then she's going to slide away. Honeymoon kind of raises her eyebrows and he's like, oh, I'll unlock that later. <laughs> yeah. Zimith actually gets like a hearty shoulder. Honeymoon will remember that. <laughs> Support level C. La, da, 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 da. <laughs> Good. Yeah, and then Honeymoon will go bother Tibbeth to kill time. I Which I imagine, as people who love to bother other people, they get along great. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Yeah, Honeymoon just starts chatting away like, So I take, so you seem to know your way around a ship. And it just fucking goes on, I imagine. Oh, hell yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They, they will go on and on about random ship facts uh, that <laughs> Steph will sprinkle in. And then yeah. also complimenting you on fucking having people around your finger. <laughs> Honey, honeymoon is, is, uh, is flattered. Uh, I imagine you info dump about ships and then honeymoon info dumps about stellar map making and it just goes back and Hell forth. Yeah. Oh yeah, absolutely. <laughs> they, they tie together too, so it works out. Yeah. Until and Fezos stare at the ocean in silence. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Fezos Honey does kind of look at uh, Latilla and is just kind of like, I hope that there won't be more trouble like this on this journey. I'd rather it be as straightforward as possible. I never rolled insight! Fuck! <laughs> Sorry. You and me both, Fezos. You and me both. Uh, <sighs> just... <laughs> Are you sure you're not a lawyer? No, I'm not a lawyer. I told you. You just really this. look like one. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's not... It's, I don't mean it as an insult. You just... You, you have the look. Very well. You have the look of you, I would say, as far as I can tell. Great descriptive. <laughs> Thank you. Good job, Bezos. <laughs> <laughs> Don't fall through. I, I'm not going to fall through. I can. I, I think he's around. a little too big for that. <laughs> I was, well, if your foot goes through the little cracks, it's like. <laughs> His foot's a little bit too big for that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I feel like as you're just. Just at some point while she's chatting with, with Tibeth, Honeymoon does make eye contact with Phazos and give you, again, that smug cat knife look that says she is going to come bother you later. <laughs> <laughs> and Phazos gives back a don't you dare look. <laughs> <laughs> Just like the ever so gentle, like, uh, nod in disapproval or, or, or shake your head. Like, no, uh, please, softly, don't. don't. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, dear dwarf. Uh, Phasos is going to approach the captain. You approach the captain. You actually notice that he looks a bit restless. He seems oh, to be nice. running his hand kind of across the various different woods and carvings of the ship. Um, as you approach him, he, he actually is um, just kind of um, surprised by your appearance as he wasn't expecting somebody else. Ah, uh, Mr. Terrain. And he kind of just pulls his hand back. Yeah, captain. You... All right, you seem a little troubled. Yeah, I, uh... He just kind of looks over his ship. Mr. Terrain, you have something you care about taken from you. Like, really care about. You put your heart and soul into it. Once. 
It hurts, I... Yes. It drives one to do many things. That loss. Would you call it love? Hmm. Myself and love have a difficult uh, relationship, you would say. Aye, but you do something out of the passion of it, aye? Because you care, because there's something precious to you. Is that not love? I believe that that could be true, yes. And the length, he just looks back at his ship and continues to rub his hands just kind of all along the carvings of the wood. And if love can drive us to do such crazy things, seems like a powerful, dangerous thing, love. For it hurts us so. Indeed. Indeed it does. Do you love your ship? He, without looking at you, just staring at it. I do. I will, um... I will say that, having lost things that I've loved, I will do what I can, my part, to make sure that you don't lose your ship. I need it, after all, to make it there and back again. He chuckles a little bit. Aye, logistics, logistics. Of course, I'll make sure that we make it back ashore before you even get a single sprinkle on your nice suit. <laughs> Thank you. I appreciate it. Then, now, thank I, you. I did have a question. I uh, speak your mind. You You'd mentioned that uh, this book, this kind of uh, whirlpools and whatnot, was the key to making it to the K. Is that correct? Aye. Apparently, according to the coordinates given by that royal, that once we get there, perhaps in a few minutes actually, there's a specific spot in which the book is to be read, wherein a large maelstrom of water will glow as bright as the sky. And that is our portal to the Kay. Ah, uh, wonderful portals. Aye, uh, it doesn't, doesn't give me the quite the excitement either. I much prefer using more traditional methods. Yes, uh, likewise. Uh, hard to map portals. Uh, good day. I'll, I'll be out and about. Aye. And Mr. Jerame. Uh, yes. I thank you for the talk. You're welcome. And then Phasus is going to go around the ship and start placing down some uh, of his instruments for mapping. Mm, all right. Um, from what from what you can tell... Oh, go on. Oh, sorry, no. Uh, do his thing first. Yeah. This isn't, like, super important information. It's more contextual. But from what you can tell, you are decently kind of south of this the massive gulf that uh, is where the continent has this, like, big space where Belkinus is, like, smack dab in the middle of. Mm -hmm. um, kind of south-ish. Uh, and just beyond the horizon, you can see kind of the southern, like, shore of the continent as well, where it's mostly barren. There's not a lot of civilization there. So mm -hmm. you know where you are. Okay, good. And as uh, a few of the uh, crew members, uh, as called out by... Helmsman, uh, helmsperson Sharn. She kind of calls out to the crew and she calls out to the captain. Captain! We're here! And the sails go up. Rackmorn walks up to the side of the ship. All right, everyone! This is it. Honey... Oh, Ooh, go on. Honeymoon, when she sees that, uh, when she hears that it seems like they've arrived, Honeymoon kind of perks up and she, she totters very quickly over to him. Um, and kind of says quietly, um, Captain Rackmorn, if you would permit me, uh, this is where we're going to be doing the, um, the portal thing with the book, yes? Aye. Um, if you would allow, uh, just a bit of time, um, I would perform a ritual to just sort of gauge what we may be getting ourselves into. 
he kind of lifts his eyebrows in uh, a little bit of surprise, like more not like negative, but just like oh, uh, oh, okay, like, and he just uh, lowers his head just ever so slightly. Uh, very well. Much obliged, Captain. I assure you, it won't take very long. I no uh, worries. Just uh, crew's not used to the formal type, is all. But uh, I oh, see no okay. reason why not. Oh, it hardly need to be formal. Uh, and honeymoon, uh, she finds like a like a clear space on the floor, and she kind of kneels down very daintily, making sure not to get her her dress snagged on any splinters and stuff. Um, and she reaches up to her horns and actually unhooks the like gold chains and diamonds on it and Ooh. starts laying them out to form a very delicate circle on the ground. Um, and as a ritual, um, Honeymoon is going to cast Augury. Oh. You see so, woe. Woe? Oh, shit. You yeah, see so honeymoon <laughs> extreme woe. Oh, dear. Um, so, yeah. So, I imagine Honeymoon is kind of kneeling before and just kind of making motions with her, her hands as these kind of, like, star-like motes kind of glow, like, in the middle of the circle that she's made with the diamonds and chains. Um, and after 11 minutes pass, after she ritually casts it, uh, I can only imagine it gets fucking dark as hell. Like, it becomes, like, black holes. Uh, and she looks at it. Uh, the captain would see her go kind of wide-eyed. Um, and she looks up at him and she's like, um, so bad news. Mm -hmm. Um, it does not seem like it's going to go super well. Hmm. Uh, I, I wanted to point out that as Phasos was finishing up putting his instruments down around the ship, he did notice Honeymoon <laughs> doing her thing and slightly <laughs> scoffed. Fuck you, I'm right. <laughs> uh, so yeah, Honeymoon relays and she's like, and I, I don't mean like, so, like inconvenient bad, I mean like probably really fucking bad. Hmm. <laughs> he looks to his crew. All right, you heard her! Arm the ship! Grab your spears! And the crew just, like, double times, moving around, kind of getting their weapons ready, loading the ballistae, putting ba uh, balls in the cannons. Uh, Tibeth is also <laughs> scrambling around, uh, helping where she can, loading uh, the cannons as well. Mm -hmm. Honey Honeymoon puts her, her ornaments back on her horns. Uh, uh, Phazos. Oh, sorry, go ahead. What's up? How long has it been since our inter interjection with the other ship? Uh, probably, like, an hour or two. You Okay. Yeah. You could theoretically short rest through that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you used anything during... The fire rune. She activated that for the short Oh, rest. okay. Yeah, you would have been able to short rest. Good deal. Okay. Uh, as, as everyone is hustling and bustling, Phazos finds um, a hook, and he takes off his coat and hangs it on a hook. Mm, all right. <laughs> Rad. So he's just <laughs> in his, like, going vest. To... He's in a he's in his vest. He also took off his tie. He's in his vest. Ah, his shirt and hell yeah! Okay. <laughs> Bouncer wear. All right. So everyone yeah, honey, kind honeymoon of has her gets ready. Star scroll on hand for spell casting. Okay. Everyone kind of gets ready. People are manning the cannons. You can see that um, Sharn has pulled a rifle from kind of a a bucket that's got a uh, bayonet on it, mm -hmm. and everyone gets ready. You see Honeymoon this. is going to the middle of the ship, partly down the stairs, so that she doesn't get thrown overboard. Okay. Yeah. Rackmorn, seeing everyone ready, the ocean goes quiet. He pulls out his little book. He turns to uh, kind of the middle of the pages, and he says a few words that those who don't understand Abyssal would not understand, a low bellowing, but those who do... Understand, he says, by right of power, we come to thee. A deep hunger, we yearn to sate. Your riches make a spirit free. We travel forward through your gate. And, Damn. And as he says that, as he completes this verse, the ocean starts to open up. And you see a small little whirlpool appear kind of on the port side of the boat. Oh, good. It. And he continues... O oh, amber island, bright and whole, the light of gold will be our curing. The world's possessions take their toll. See us through to ease the burden. 
and the whirlpool turns into a full-on maelstrom. Ugh. Captain, is that supposed to happen? I, according to the rich folk, yes. All right. And you can see if you Am look down. Am we supposed down, to head into that? Oh, not yet. Shit. That'll tear us to bits. <laughs> good. Uh, oh, Bezos, good. Good. <laughs> Bezos frantically checks a couple of his uh, his devices. <laughs> they all seem to be in place so far. A little shaky as the boat starts to shake and the water starts to ripple. He says the first few words until suddenly the boat boat just poof, everyone make a deck save. Oh, oh god. Oh, okay. Something hits the boat. I have no decks. Oh. Ooh, nice. <laughs> Got him. As the boat is hit, Rackmorn, he kind of loses the book. It just foof, falls out of his hand. And the fear bowl right here falls right overboard. Okay. Oh, God. And then, as he does, out from the water springs forth a massive creature that swallows him whole. A kraken. Oh, 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 oh my God. On, Let him play, Rev. <laughs> No. Eats him whole. Kate, cue the music. Okay. Ah. So I'm going to need everyone to roll initiative. Ugh. If you fail the deck save, which is DC 15, you will Not be knocked dead. prone at the start okay. of this. Okay. Then I am prone. Okay. That makes sense with my knocked prone. I have fallen on Theodore. I'm sorry, <laughs> Theodore. <laughs> you crushed him. <laughs> crushed him with your big snake tail. <laughs> First up will be Honeymoon. You see that immediately various tentacles just spew up from the water. And actually this um, this halfling gets thrown over here and takes some damage. And uh, yeah, so you see this massive kraken eat one of your crew members and various tentacles mm -hmm. have now kind of invaded the ship. And you can see cool. Rackmorn's book as well is over here. Yeah. Uh, Honeymoon watches the guy get eaten takes note of all the tentacles around, like very, very quickly um, assessing the situation. Uh, she is going to die for that book. All right. Ah. You pick up the book. I'm going to say that it's going to take a full action to uh, read fine. through the verse, if you wish. Uh, oh, yeah. Fuck yeah. I'm going to read it. Yeah? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> all right. So here is actually the final verse. Okay. Um... So am I able to speak it as part of that action? As I yes. Honeyman grabs it, uh, kind of struggling to to brace herself and the fucking swaying ship that this octopus is attacking. Um, and she uh, she yells out, Bless us now, your gentle bays, the land besought by heroes eld. Bring us to the golden cave. Pretty please? <laughs> As you say the final words in abyssal that you guys who don't understand it hear the low bellowing of her and then the questionable thing uh, phrase yeah. at the very end. <laughs> the maelstrom shakes and a bright glow appears from it. The portal is open. Yeah, Honeymoon just looks to the captain and is like, you might want to get on that. At your call, Captain Rackmorn just says, I, I'll be working on that. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, my turn's not quite done, um, as my bonus action, I'm going to take on, m for my starry form, I'm going to take the archer form. Oh, uh, nice. Uh, as a bonus action, I'm using part of my wild shape to turn into my, my starry form. Uh, you see Honeymoon's body almost seem to glow from the inside out, like she has become kind of translucent, um, and a lot of different, like, golden... Uh, pinpricks of light like stars kind of shine along her body and the gold flakes that she wears as just makeup uh, glow very bright um so yeah she looks like she is made of of nebulae um and uh since she chose the archer form constellations that resemble somebody pulling back a bow have appeared along her uh and she can't do anything this turn but um she, you see a uh, luminous light forming the shape of an arrow at her fingertips that she's getting ready to do next turn. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, uh, so, sorry. Um, I didn't realize when I take the form, uh, I can make an attack. Is it okay if I do that? If not, it's fine if not. But I can and make a range. that's all on a bonus action, yeah? Yes. Then yes, because that's okay. all in one bonus action. All right. Damn. Well, then, there's a range spell cool. attack. So Honeymoon does, in fact, hurl that... Uh, 
luminous arrow. There, there we go. Hey. Yeah, okay. so Honeymoon hurls hurls a luminous arrow at one of the tentacles, uh, okay. the one that Tibbet's at. Okay, you hurl it and... <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah. And what type of damage is this? Radiant. Radiant, okay. You Bing bong. <laughs> you fire this starry beam just at this tentacle that singes it on the side, just <laughs> and it kind of starts to wiggle f- uh, <laughs> frantically as well. Be gone. Thought. <laughs> So yeah, Honeymoon is starred up, uh, but that's my turn. Very well. Next to Beth. So Beth, uh, first of all, is going to use, uh, you have to use full movement or half movement to get up? Half from movement. Her own? So you'll have okay. 15 feet of movement after getting up. Cool. Uh, she'll get up, uh, take note of, holy shit. Oh, well, that's not, I did not die. <laughs> Tabeth is dead. <laughs> uh, <laughs> she's going to take note of everything and die. Whoops. Um, She's gonna take. She's gonna assess the situation. Notice that the portal is like fully open. She's like, "We have to get these. We have to get these, these tentacles off of our ship so we can make it." And she's going to run over uh, and start stabbing stab. at, at at this <laughs> big boy. All right, show me the stab. <laughs> the stab. She has oh, tiny dagger. Unfortunately, a fifteen is not enough. It, the, its hide is very thick. So she's gonna take a, a stabble at it. It's, it has very, very thick hide. You know, as you would probably imagine for a Kraken. Yeah. And that, and that's uh, the end of her turn, I guess. <laughs> All right. Next is the crew. And a few of them, seeing this, panic and start to leap from the ship. No, come on, boys. Dash, leap into the ship and go into the portal. Oh, well, oh okay. Well, honestly, who can blame them? And Rackmorn sees this and is pissed <laughs> he yells at them oh you cowards come back here you're abandoning my ship does this mean we get their pay <laughs> he glares a dagger at you not now miss langley <laughs> understood <laughs> oh. <laughs> so you have fewer hands now as some of them have bolted Damn. you're oh. stuck with me theodore <laughs> they <laughs> Theodore is like, <laughs> hang in there, bud. He, also, Latilla, why are you sideways? I'm prone. I fell on you, Theodore. Okay. So I'm just gonna roll a general uh, few attacks for them and do just do this quickly. Okay, a few of them get a few hits in. Theodore uh, kind of goes to grab one of the harpoons and stab at uh, one of the tentacles. Doesn't make much way. Uh, until Sharn takes her bayonet and like stabs straight through. You can see Rackmorn yeah. takes out his pistol and fires a few shots while dropping them and pulling out like uh, the other ones like from his jacket. You can see the rest of the crew are doing their best. Uh, this halfling is gonna go into the ballista and fire it at this kind of, and it's like a big harpoon lands into this tentacle Aww. that starts to wiggle as well. So they're doing a little bit of damage and helping out. Yes. Next is a Kraken's turn. Good. This tentacle is going to bash this ballista. It hits the ballista, it misses the halfling. The halfling is able to dodge kind of out of the way and just like drop down, but the ballista is destroyed. Cool. Just <laughs> completely wrecked. <laughs> this one is nah. going to try and grapple to Beth. Yay! As it goes down. Uh, so, to Beth, I'm going to need you to give me a uh, acrobatics or athletics of your choice. To sl- okay. try and slip through. Oh, you do slip through. Nice. Uh, yeah. Yep. It goes to grab you, but you're able to use its its like watery, mucusy ness to slip oh, yourself. Oh, up. too slimy for me. <laughs> this one. I prefer my calamari cooked. <laughs> <laughs> this one is going to grab the cannon oh. and is going to throw it <laughs> at Phasos. Uh, whoa! Wait. So it's gonna use oh, fling. <laughs> oh no! Well, uh, do I roll something or? Is... Uh... So this is a ranged attack. Okay. Okay. And uh. actually, you know what? I'm gonna make this a saving throw. Yes. This is going to be a deck save. Okay. As it throws this cannon because it's like basically an AOE at this point. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh. Ouch. As you Ouchies. try and duck out of the way, uh, bits of shrapnel and bits of the, the debris from the uh, cannon as it was falling apart from the mighty grip of the Kraken just like kind of batters you as it's thrown. And you are going to take 19 bludgeoning damage. 
Okay. And you see Rackmorn like gasp at that too. And this tentacle is going to slam. So all in this area, uh, Lotilla, I'm going to need you to make a dexterity saving throw now. Okay. Uh. With this slam, you are going to take 21 bludgeoning damage. Oh! All right. And let's see if these two save as well. Ooh. Uh, Sharn is able to dodge out of the way. She takes a little bit of splinters, but Theodore is knocked out cold. No! Oh. Oh, Theodore. Not dead, but he's unconscious. As the, the tentacle is like coming down and you and Sharn are like bracing, you see that Theodore is just stunned in fear. Oh, bother. <laughs> and he is like flattened on the deck of the ship. Okay. Ooh. Is he still stuck underneath? Or is he just on the ship? He's on the ship. He's just like a little dented into the wood panels. Okay. Nice mm. Theodore size hole. <laughs> Phasos, your turn. All right. Uh, how damaged is this cannon that was thrown at me? Is it inoperable? Um, <laughs> if you're talking about the cylinder, the cylinder is fine. It's just detached from the rolling mechanism, you know, the wooden pieces that would hold it up. Okay. Uh, can this I... bitch gonna get a handheld cannon can this I, sucker. Can oh. I pick up the cannon and fire it? Uh... With a strength check of DC 12, you most certainly can. Uh, would it be strength or athletics? Ath you know what? Athletics. Okay. Let's try. Yeah! Oh, oh very close. <laughs> Damn. Close. And where are you aiming? Um, well, let's see. I'm aiming at uh, his eye. His eye, okay. So you pick it up on one shoulder, and with your other hand, you have the lighting stick. Mm -hmm. And you light it, and I'm going to need you to make uh, an attack plus five. Oof. Oh. Ooh, that's a 10. And it goes a little wide. You don't quite have your footing, but it looked cool. Okay. <laughs> the loud well, bang rings in your ears ever so slightly, but you miss yeah. the Kraken. Okay, that's fine. Um, I'm going... So that was my action. Yeah. Uh, um, I am going to... Well, I'm going to rage because I'm, I'm angry yeah. at that with oh. my bonus action. Um, and I'm going to action surge. Mm. Oh, fuck um, yeah. Get his ass. <laughs> so I, 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 I'm angry. I just kind of drop the uh, the cannon uh, because I would need to get another cannonball for it. And uh, there's a tentacle right next to me, right? There is. I'm going to punch it in the freaking tentacle. Punch it in the <laughs> tentacle. Yes. As I, as right I pull in the back... Tent uh, my my hand it becomes coated in kind of an inky black as I uh, start uh, thrusting forward, um, and let me see I'm raging. So do that. This bitch about to Ganondorf. What the fuck? Unfortunately, ooh. Uh, what is up with these rolls? I'm really yeah, so you're rolling little. real bad. Jeez. Oh. Yeah, this is really. Phaser's having a bad day. <laughs> I tried. You go to punch, and. It actually makes your fist a little sore. Oh, no. How tough <laughs> this thing is. Darn, okay. Well, he'll know for next time. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Lotilla. Alright, I would like to do my bonus action first, if that's okay. Okay, yep, you may. Actually, I think I'll get up first. <laughs> you get yeah. up. You use you up half of your Stand movement. Up. Let's get the little icon off. And the bonus action to I am now a large creature. Alright, you grow to a large size. Oh God! Oh. <laughs> Jesus takes notice. I have notice. a fifth tentacle to deal with. I <laughs> uh, would like to move here. Can I slide Theodore over here? Easily, yes. Although Thank that you. is lower down. It's better than quite being right here. Okay, you slide him over, kind of in between the the railing, and he just plops to the to the floor. <laughs> yeah, and then I would like to take a couple stabs. Okay, show me the stab. Oh, she has also pulled out a shield. She's okay. going to stab one-handed with the trident. Show me the trident. Okay, her two because attacks. The fire. first one will hit, so show me the damage. Yep, you stab into it, and you nearly cut this tentacle like uh, like a massive hole off. 
feels nice. looks like it's about to be cut All with right. a nice swift stab. Nice. And that will be her turn. All right. Honeymoon. Okay, so I'm guessing I'm guessing fairy fire if I did it, it would only apply to whichever part of the beast was in that cube, yes? Mm, yes. Okay. So Honeymoon is kind of very frantically looking between all the tentacles. She shouts to the captain, If we disoriented, do you think it will let go with all the tentacles? I'm not sure. I'm not most proficient with fighting krakens. Okay, well, just figured I'd ask. I Uh, appreciate the concern. Honeymoon looks to Phazos and to Beth, and she shouts over, You two can get to its head, yes? Uh, I? Yeah. Uh, So then Honeymoon says, very well then, and she will fairy fire the Kraken's head. Oh boy. Nah, it fails. <laughs> <laughs> nice. All right, so. You're telling me the giant big old Kraken ain't dexterous? No, actually, it has a plus <laughs> yeah, zero. Yeah, so, uh, Honeymoon's fairy fire is a mix of, like, golden and very vibrant violet fire that kind of just dances around it. Um, so, any attack roll against the affected creature has advantage if you guys can see it, and it cannot benefit from being invisible. So, uh,. Well, Honeymoon is going to go ahead and make her starry attack. Yes, yeah. the 20 will hit. All right, nice. and where's that diablage? <laughs> Ooh, nice. Yes, so you're aiming for the yeah. head, yeah? Yeah, she's aiming, like, down its fucking gob. Yeah, you fire it, and just, like, it lights up the inside of its throat, which, like, goes down very far and makes it flinch a little bit. Yeah, Honeymoon... Uh, she casts the fairy fire, and it, she's kind of she has one hand outstretched, like you know, in concentration. And so she she shouts to Phasus and to Beth, "Make the most of it, and please don't let it hit me." And she's going to scoot this way. <laughs> <laughs> All right, to Beth, your That's turn. Me. I honeymoon. I'm on it. And she's going to sprint up to this cannon, which is thirty feet. <laughs> uh, uh, she's she's going to presume that it's loaded from earlier. Whenever everybody was now, scrambling if you to, move, you to are, get... You are moving out of the melee range of the tentacle, so Ooh. it will have an attack of opportunity. Yeah, I'll use my bonus action for that. All right, cool. To yeah. disengage. Um, she's going to run up to it, assume it's uh, already uh, already loaded, uh, aim it closer to her target, like at, <sighs> at the Kraken itself, because uh, I imagine it's aimed farther out. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then she's going to cast produce flame in her hand and then she's going to use that flame to smack the back of the ah. cannon to light it. <laughs> Alright, good. you do so and this thing is so like, no roll for this. This is so wide, there's no <laughs> way you can possibly miss it. It is point blank. You're just going to roll me 5d10. Yes! <laughs> Get his ass. Okay. That's, so that's the cannon's damage. Bing, and bong. you fire it just right into this thing and it just Ooh. like ch- chips a few teeth off of it it like makes a big singe you can see it fall into its gullet a little and it's like shaking trying to shake it off all right uh feel more like that Thesos, if you could uh, assist with that please now this cannon uh, uh is now out of a cannonball and needs to be loaded to be fired again but i am out of bonus action and movement and full action so i will have to do that later now it's the crew's turn let's see if anybody else decides to be a coward uh, honeymoon would would yell about the fairy fire if that helps the crew hmm. land some hits you know what it would let's say it does or about the cannons yeah has to be the head though got to get to the scary part <laughs> they're going to stay stalwart all right sharn is not going to make headway on this tentacle unfortunately but she's going to start making her way and she's going to take the attack of opportunity. Oh, she gets a, a right smack by the tentacle, and let's see if she does not trip. Oh, my God. She does trip. Jeez. Oh. Come on, baby she girl. Just, she tries to give the tentacle an attack. She tries to head to that towards the face of the creature, but then she gets tripped up and... Poof, oh, oh bugger. thing. So she is prone. Theodore is still out. I'm torched. Uh, oh. The dwarf is going to try... And go. So the, the door. The same thing that happens to Sharn happens to the dwarf. Oh, no. The honeymoon is yelling. The, the head. The head. They are, they're trying to get to the head. Yeah. No. Honey. Honeymoon is just demanding. Oh, oh I see. I see. <laughs> the orc manages to get away, and he is going to you. He's going to pull out a cutlass, and he's going to go I slice see. at the beast a bit. He is well. able to make a few cuts. Atta thankfully. Boy. Take off the beard. Uh, the elf is going to come over here and they are going to cast a few spells. You can see Ooh. they're using the old reliable firebolt. Yeah, just... 
Uh, the halfling, as well, is going to pull out a their pistol, and they're going to fire, similar to Rackmorn, they pull out, like, two pistols, fire them, drop them, and pull out their next ones for the next time. And Rackmorn is going to pull out his own cutlass and run. <laughs> he runs up, and he, like, puts one hand on it, like, as he's drawing it, out from its sheath, kind of one hand kind of skidding alongside the blade and it starts to coat the sword in lightning and he makes a swift slice <laughs> upwards as he draws it out. Oh. Oh. Fuck yeah, he's got that, he got that lightning grease, let's mm -hmm. go. And he's gonna make one, two, three attacks. One of them misses, but he makes a few cuts with the lightning. Does lightning work on Krakens? That's a good question. Anyway, it's the Kraken's <laughs> turn. It's electrotype against the water type. Of course, it's super effective. <laughs> that's like, that's like that's basic Pokemon. math. <laughs> this tentacle is going to try and attack you, Lotilla. Okay. Of course, it doesn't hit. This on one that. is going to try and grab the dwarf that's on the ground. And it does. And yeah. it pulls him into the briny deep. Oh, no. Oh. Well, that's one tentacle down. Or is it? <laughs> And this tentacle is going to straight up attack you, Phazos. Yeah. Uh, you're going to be able to dodge out of the way of it. Ooh. Just like, just like move out of the way and it just kind of bashes into the wooden walls of the ship, splintering a little bit more. And this one is going to try and grab the halfling. The halfling's able to slip out, luckily. And lastly, the head of the kraken is going oh, no. to take a couple of bites at oh, the no. orc and Tibeth. Oh, good. Yay! Goes to bite the orc. Ooh. It is uh -oh. able to, like, do just a big, massive cut on the orc. Ooh, it cuts him up pretty good. Oh, no. And let's see. The orc is now prone as well. Okay, <laughs> Tibeth. It is going to hit Tibeth. Oh! Okay. And Tibeth, you are going to take. That's going to be 15 piercing damage. And I need you okay. to make a strength saving throw. Ooh. Uh oh. <laughs> oh, okay. Okay, you're fine. Okay. You're up. You're good. <laughs> the sheer weight of this bite almost pushes you to the floor, but you hold up. God. Next, Phazos. Okay, so uh, Phazos is going to um, run towards the cannon over here. Uh, he doesn't care that he's going to get an opportunity attack against him. Okay, um, let's see if it hits. Oh, yeah, that's going to get you. Wait. You're going to take 17 damage, Phazos. Okay, that's fine. From the slap of the tentacle as you're running away. So this one is not straight on the Kraken, so you will have to make an attack roll. However, you will have advantage because of the fairy fire. Okay. Honeymoon so. is going to be insufferably smug about this later. One so more. 17, 17, and then... this. So the 17 will hit. Nice. nice. Now, oh, I have okay. advantage against him, right? Yes. Yeah. Does this count for sneak attack? <laughs> oh, you son of a bitch. If I have advantage. You son of a bitch. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there's the damage. Oh, Hell yeah. One. Crap. Okay. And then so. let me roll the 2d6 as well, because I only have baby sneak attack. <laughs> Very Still nice. Still good. Okay. Still good. good you too. fire it, and it, like, bruises through. Like, you, you hear, a like, a crunch. Crack. <laughs> Like, as you hit it in the side of the head, and, like, the eyeball right here, you hit it right in the eye, the eye socket is now empty. You push the eye Ooh. into ah. the skull oh of the Kraken, God. and it roars oh, out in pain. Get his ass. Well, ready? So I'm actually um. gonna give it... No, no, it still has one more eye. Uh, Joseph, can you invent the uh, condition no depth perception, please? <laughs> <laughs> it has a little bit of a disadvantage <laughs> as a treat. I'm going to use my, my bonus action to second wind. Nice. Oh, okay. Um, Seems so, wise. Yeah. So that cannon is now out of cannonball. Oh! That was a poor oh, second wind. Oh, jeez. Sorry, is that your turn? Yeah, that's my whole turn. Okay, Lotilla, your turn. Could I theoretically use my tail Sorry. really quick as a bonus action slash extra action to help a uh, helm's person? Not I'm gonna, still, yeah, sorry. I'm, I'm going to say it's a full action to help. That's yeah. fair. Then I'm gonna do some attacks. Give me some attacks. Try dent again. Nice. Yes, that'll hit. Ooh, that's a hit. All right. <laughs> There's damage for that, and then a d6. Ooh, nice. Ooh, nice. nice. Ooh. 
and then I'm gonna try and hit again. So that first attack actually cuts off the tentacle. Just like, oh, you nice. slice it, just like, fuck yeah. Straight, straight through, you can see it like into its like weird wiggly marrow and it just wiggles like it back into the water. Oh. oh my God. Nice. I can throw this dagger in that range. You most certainly can. I'm gonna try. So you would have a normal attack because you're throwing at disadvantage, but thanks to advantage gotcha. from the fairy fire. So unfortunately, a 13 is not going to be enough. The force That's of your fair. throw does not quite pierce. Mm -hmm. It gets stuck in his teeth. Wow. <laughs> And right. you can see that uh, Sharn kind of on the floor just looking up at you. Oh, it's a mighty fine thruston. Thank you. Oh. I don't want to leave Sharn here, but I have movement. Yeah, she'll be all right. Yeah. Uh, she'll uh, walk it off. She's just going to say yeah. that. Will you be okay? I, I'll be all right. I'll look after the boy as well. Thank you. I'll go right about here. Okie dokie. All right. Shoom. Shoom. Noise. All right. And that will be my turn. Honeymoon. All right. Uh, first trick, I'm gonna do my, uh, archer shape, uh, bing bong. Nice. nice. Yep. And that's gonna be right at the face? Right at the face. I I'm aiming for its other eye now. Its other eye. Okay. Let's see. Uh, and then the dabblage. <clears throat> Actually, let's see if you crit. No, but it's still yeah. a decent <laughs> hit. You fire at it and you can see that you've, like, bruised it real hard. It's sizzling and you can see that it's blinking, like, a lot in pain, not like a proper blink because it's like, it blinking like a, like how reptiles blink to like, not blink, but like, you know what I mean. <laughs> yeah. Uh, well, let's see if I can close the deal. Uh, I have three free uses of Guiding Bolt per day. So I'm gonna do one of those uh, oh, sick. right now. As a bonus action? Uh, as my full action. As your full action. Well, what was yep. the other one? My bonus action. Oh, really? Ah. Wow. Huh. Yep, it's Bog. Okay then. Okay, let's see if you're Guiding Bolt crits. Uh, keep forgetting I have fucking advantage. Mm. Okay, nope. thank goodness you had advantage. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So this one, as it's like blinking its eye, like dazed a little bit, this one does take out its other eye as it yeah! sizzles and you can see it like burns over and you can see the eye looks like charred, like black uh. charredness. <laughs> yeah, and, Honeymoon's uh, Guiding Bolt is very like blindingly like white hot gold. Yep, and it is going to be blinded. Its attacks will have, be at disadvantage. Nice. nice. Yes. Uh, the attack would give uh, the next attack made advantage, but you already have that because of fairy fire. <laughs> so have fun. Uh, honey, honey, honeymoon's gonna stay put. Uh, she sends the guiding bolt, takes out its eye, uh, and gives everyone who's looking a big thumbs up. <laughs> awesome. She's going to fucking stay put. To Beth. Would it be a full action to load the cannon then? Yes, it would be. Okay. Could run. Could run to this uh, one. Yeah, that one is loaded. I could. Or I could jump on top of the cannon oh to get a better uh, angle at him. Oh, you could. You most certainly could. <laughs> and he's and she's going to spread her hands out. out and it's like, uh, apologies if I get any cinders on your ship there, Captain. And she's going to cast um, uh, Burning Hands. Nice. Oh. Get his ass. Nice. So right. it's a dex uh, 14. Okay, so show me burning hands. And it's going to take the full damage. <laughs> and it just like, you just, just this this blasting cone of fire. And Captain Rackmorn's like, I don't care. I just want it away from her. And uh, you burst the fire into it. Just like continuing that bright singe that the guiding bolt just did. Well done. Calamari, order up. Next is the crew, uh, which only consists of Sharn, the prone orc, the elf, and the halfling, okay. and Theodore. And poor passed out Theodore. <laughs> Sharn is going to get up and see. Yep, she's just going to come on down and she's going to take care of Theodore, patch him up a little bit, stabilize him, all that stuff. Nice. Rackmorn is going to continue to swipe away at the Kraken. Get his ass. And, ooh, he didn't roll well. Uh, only one of his attacks hit this time. He's able to chop oh. off a few tentacles, but mostly just swinging wildly in anger. Uh, the elf is going to try and go over here to, no, this elf is a spellcaster. It's going to cast a few more spells at the head. They go a bit wide. Wow. The gnome is going to take another shot, uh, another two shots at the head with their pistols. Pew, pew. Pew, pew. They do hit, very nice. 
Okay, they're just laying into the head now, and you can see the thing is, like, agonizing. However, it's still up, and the Kraken is going to do something drastic. This tentacle is going to make a sweeping attack. No, not on me! <laughs> and you are right in its arc. No, I know I should have moved. I almost Yay. fucking moved. So, you're going to need to make a dexterity saving throw. Fuck, I'm not very good at those. Uh-huh. You and your four-inch heels. Ooh, okay. Oh, You're Damn. able to like as the the tentacle is winding back, you see what's gonna happen and it sweeps and you just kinda like leap and like vault over it and stumble a little yeah. bit, falling onto the ship and kind of hitting your elbow. You will take eight damage. Okay. And uh where's my fucking HP? So Here's it knocks over mast. pretty much every single cannon into the water. Oh no. It knocks off the railing, it knocks off this crate of ammo, and it also knocks down the crow's nest, which falls. Here, I need to make a constitution save to see if I can keep fairy fire up, because yep. I took damage. Yep. Oh, nice. look at it go. Didn't even yeah. break a sweat. Yeah, I feel like it's swept out and Honeymoon like tottered a bit, but she's she's so good in heals. So she, yeah. it's, it's fine. So now it's over here with that sweep. Bastard. Are we worried about uh, timber on that cro crow's nest? Uh, it is going, yeah, no, you don't. It's it's gonna fall like this direction and it just misses like, Phazos and the halfling. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. And you can see Rackmore like seeing this and he you can see that he is on the verge of tears. Aww. This one is also going to make a sweeping attack and Phazos, you're gonna have to make a dexterity saving throw as well. You're making a lot of those now. Yeah. Oh, oh no! Oh, no. So, you are going to take 16 damage. Okay. And you're going to be knocked into the water. Oh my fucking god. Okay. okay. Right over, just like, phew, phew, right there. Great. Next to the Kraken. Yeah. yeah. And What's finally, the, effort? the Kraken is going to make a few more bites. Just two more. One at Tibeth. You're able to dodge out of the way. Oh, thank mm. god. One at the Orc. Unfortunately, that's not able to dodge out of the way. Picks him up and swallows him. Oh, God. Son of a fuck. Phazos, <laughs> you're in the water. Mm. Okay. All the tentacles are off the boat. Though, Mount mostly. him and punch the shit out of him. Well, <laughs> you you say that. Um, yay, I'm going to use um, my... Uh, as I kind of fall into the boat, uh, Phazos is going to reach out his hand as this uh, inky blackness uh, kind of Ooh. sweeps out of it as a, uh, a tentacle of his own uh, mm. uh, appears. Um, and he's going to try to grab onto uh, the, uh, basically the face of this Kraken Ooh. and pull himself up with his uh, grasping tentacles. Ooh, show me oh, grasping nice. tentacles. What, is, uh, okay, what does it do? I, I, I tried to, okay, there you go. Display. Yeah, there you go. Uh, oh. so I, I, it's, a, it's, a, it's basically a, a grapple check, but I am doing it from mm. down there and trying to grab up high so that I can climb my, my own tentacle. Okay, wow, okay. Let's um, see, this thing is mighty strong, but it is- Yes, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> Come on, we're ducks. So, it crit failed. Yes! <laughs> and so you funny. climb right on top of the Kraken <laughs> and like you, your tentacle like grips onto one of its like, spikes along its back and crushes it as you pull up and like rip the thing right off of its scales. Nice. Yes. You are now on the Kraken. <laughs> Great. Uh, uh, I, I also also, do, yeah, uh, you yeah, need I to make that. a deck save for Fairy Fire. <laughs> oh yeah, because uh, I'm in his, 16. Uh, his, yeah. his thing. Oh gosh, okay. <laughs> deck save. Oopsie, you're also fairy fired. Okay, I, he has advantage <laughs> against me. Oh no. Oh no. It's, All right. it's equality. Uh, and with with that, you when you grab onto it, you can see that this thing is tired. It's 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 looking rough. Okay. Lotilla. Great. She does not need to jump overboard to try to get Phasos. That's fine. So she's gonna move into range and take some stabs. Okay. Show me the stabs with advantage. Right. The fifteen is not quite enough. Okay, that's, that's the nope. first miss. Yep. So and that's then the first the second attack. One. Hey, ah, there it one is. Hit. Okay. Show me the damage. All right. Damage plus six. Plus six. And Ooh. I actually think I am going to uh, action surge and attack again. All right, action surge. You have two more attacks. Yeah. All right. Both with Advantagi. Advantagi. What is with this 
Uh, I believe in you. Why? You can do it. Ooh. Ooh. Come on, you're almost there. You just need to roll a 10. There yeah. we go. That's Let's it. Let's see if you crit. But 23 is no, but a 23. Good. All right. Show me the dead ablege. Damage. Okay. D6. What the hell? Oh, okay. Oh, you take a couple of stabs. Just, just like into it and poking it. And you can see this thing is like wailing wildly, just back and forth. Phasos, you can barely hold on to it as it's like making its head kind of wave back and forth in agony. Honeymoon. You're up. Honeymoon. Um, before she does anything, she is going to shout across the boat in Abyssal, go home <laughs> and see if it does anything. In Abyssal. Bitch. Yep. You shout in Abyssal and the Kraken shouts back in Abyssal. Oh, Jesus Christ. You are not worthy. In quieter Abyssal, you can speak. <laughs> in common, Honeymoon mutters under her breath, oh, we'll fucking see about that. She's going to <laughs> full action disengage, uh, go over, just go fucking straight this way. Uh -huh. um, and then she'll go ahead and bonus action her uh, starry missile fucking thing. Show me the starry <laughs> missile fucking thing. All right. So we got advantage. So one, two. Yep, the 17 eight. will hit. Show me the damage. Nice. All right. Yeah. How do you kill it? <laughs> oh shit! So, honeymoon. So this thing said, "You are not worthy." Uh, that makes honeymoon. Uh, that annoys her. That makes her angry. Uh, and so she, uh, you know, sprints out of reach of its tentacle in her in her fucking four inch heels, clacking across the wooden deck, uh, and she comes to a stop. Uh, takes a moment to just take a breath, center herself kind of move like puts a hand through her hair to straighten it and then she points her hand with uh with the glowing starry arrow forming at it and says I don't think you're one to judge and she fires it off us uh, right down its gob <laughs> it goes right in and you can see that it like closes its mouth and you can see it kind of puff up just ever so slightly as the light inside it kind of comes through its thick hide, glowing ever so slightly. And uh, uh. Pharos, uh, Phazos, sorry, you can see it underneath your feet as well. And it bah, just like bur bursts out of its mouth a big smoke as it sinks into the ocean. Phazos? I'm going to jump off and yep, try to you, get to the boat. Yeah, you <laughs> almost get pulled down with it, but the tentacles kind of fall away, and you are able to get back on the ship as well. I thought it was going to blow up for a second. We were going to get covered in guts. That would be pretty funny. All right. Well done. Basil You've defeated the Kraken. Yeah. Woo! Woo! Good job, everybody. Oh, oh okay. Yeah. Well, that was an adventure. Yeah, Honeymoon. So I imagine Captain Rackmorn is, like, pretty visibly lamenting his ship, right? Yes, like, very much so. Damage. After the Kraken leaves, he just looks at his at his ship and says nothing he just scans his eyes over honeymoon Blood will is gonna move for you oh it, uh, honeymoon says oh you're so polite darling thank you uh yeah. honeymoon uh comes next to him kind of near the the, the fucking ba ba balustrade yes mm -hmm. uh and she kind of lays a hand on it um kind of looks down at it and she looks up at the captain, uh, and she says, Why don't you see about getting us into that portal, darling? I'll do what I can. And she starts casting Mending, just mm. all across the ship. So it's going to take her a while, but she's going to just putz around and fix things where she can. You see that he notices this, and he kind of, like, has a sudden, like, reverbial gasp. And you can see his eyes start to water a bit. Hmm. Oh, dear. Oh, no, no, no. There's no need for tears, darling. It's, uh... I don't even have to use a spell slot for it. He he just kind of, like, he smiles a little bit and wipes his eye. Oh, no, the captain, don't cry. It's just, um... Salt. The salt of the sea is ever so L potent. A little bit of ocean of spray, as it were, from the Kraken. <laughs> hmm. Oh, yes. You get us taken care of at the portal. I'll see to your ship. Deal? Mm. I 
Honeymoon gives him a very a very sweet smile. Um, Tibeth turns after this. Uh, uh, yeah, Honeymoon's discussion. just making her way around the ship. Tibeth's going to turn to uh, Phasos as he pulls himself aboard. So, that was some mighty fine grappling out there. Uh, say, could you help me move this mast so that it's not precariously perched over the water? Mm, yes. And we're going to slowly try to shove the mast so that we can get it back aboard for <laughs> repairs later. I do want to say, as Honeymoon moves past Phasos uh, to you know do her mending, she does give him a very smug, you know, colon three smile, and she says... You're, yeah, you're welcome, welcome for the fairy fire. <laughs> and, she just, and she just walks past. <laughs> he does not respond. Of course. <laughs> if that is the case, I think Basila was going to try and help Theodore realize she couldn't do a whole lot in this form and probably come help with the mast. She's yeah. big. Uh, you big. can see uh, Sharn appreciates the help regardless. And uh, yeah, pat, pat. so... <laughs> So I will say, you are able to mend, like, the odd splinter here and there. But in order to fully repair the ship, your guess, maybe a full... It requires, like, a full-on work from, like, yeah, a full yeah. actual repair team uh, to get it properly sailing again. You yeah, might, this, is a, this is a patch job. Mm -hmm, yeah. You are able to get some of the railing back and mend some of the broken holes, but this uh, ship yeah. is nigh totaled. Yeah. Mending is a cantrip. There's it's only a, so much it's going to do. Yeah. It's a delightful spell, but... Yeah. And even if yeah, you did, you need someone to lift the mast back in its place, and yep. you know, you need new material because some of it fell in the water. Mm -hmm. All those yeah. cannons. When when they get the, the mast kind of back on the ship, Phasos is going to go around and check his instruments and see <laughs> how they're doing. They all Expecting... seem to be good. Oh, okay. Except you don't have a pen anymore. <gasps> <laughs> Shit! Oh. You have Honeyman your charts. You have your you have your parchment, but you don't have anything to write with. At this point, until I probably would revert back to normal size. Okay, let me put you back on normal size. Honeymoon is unstarified. Re realizing that this ship is going to need a full repair, Rackmorn just um kind of waves his hand over to you. Just kind of holds his hand up at you. That'll be all, Miss Langley. I think we can only do so, so much without a full repair team. But As you say, Captain. We did come here for a purpose. He looks over on the port side, looking at the portal. And I don't mean to leave her behind. Kind of looking down at his ship. Sharn kind of speaks up. Uh, uh, captain, are you sure it's going to be able to handle going through there? And the captain speaks out. I'm not. But I'm not about to let it sit here with that monster possibly still about. I'm not taking any chances. I'm not leaving her behind. And he just kind of like puts his hand on the wheel. She's all I got left. Okay. Honeymoon makes a mental note to uh, talk about the fact that it is not actually something he has left. Eric, how big is Tabeth? Uh, Tabeth is 5'8". She's the smallest in our crew. And that's still pretty tall. Yeah. Yeah. She is, however, going to be kind of grasped and moved away from the edge <laughs> oh well i mean at this point she she would probably be closer to right here uh after moving the mast until is just looking at the captain as he's apparently directing us into this hole in the ocean yep. yeah right right best not to be close to the edge for that yeah. last phasos does some last checks on instruments and is prepared even though he has no pen <laughs> He finds in... the closest thing to a pen. Yeah, you find some stray chalk on board. <laughs> or char charcoal, rather. For... Sorry. <laughs> no, go Honeymoon on. snickers at him for having to use instruments. <laughs> if you can fit underneath, it might be a good idea to do so. I don't think you can fit, Phasos. That was yeah, not directed right. at you. Okay. <laughs> what? Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> I, yeah, probably... Probably best I should be out here. Ocean spray, all that Thanks. water, fire, not good. Anyways, thank you. Goodbye. <laughs> Honey, honeymoon is, well, there's no crack and she can see to be worried about. So she's going to come get a good seat. All right. Rackmorn just calls out to what few crew members are left to lower the sails. And whoever is able to help out lowers them as best they can with what few support sails that they have. And directs the ship into the portal. 
it starts to shake and shift and Sharn speaks out, Captain, the ship can't take it. And the captain speaks out, she can take it. The ship starts to bob and weave and swirl into the portal as it feels as though the maelstrom gets larger and larger, swallowing it up. And you guys are blinded by a bright shining light. Yeah. Godzilla's going to coil around these two. <laughs> Honeyman has her has her nail her claws just digging into the wood uh, <laughs> on the balustrade, and you're blinded by this light, and unconsciousness takes you oh. until you feel the dry roughness of sand underneath your body. As you all come to, you awaken on a beach. You wake up, all of you, kind of in tandem. Feels as though you had a very, very daunting night last night, whatever it was. (laughs) And you can see bits of debris and wood washed all up on shore, as well as rocks and kind of pieces of driftwood as well. You stare out into the ocean, and it's an endless horizon of blueness. The sky looks to be a sky, of course, with full of clouds and such, but it feels unfamiliar to you. And as you look behind you, inland, you can see a very peculiar sight. A volcano Ooh. with smokestacks of a honey yellow. Oh, fuck, yes. Yo! And I think that's a good place to end today's session. Ladies Hell and gentlemen, yeah. we got him. <laughs> we got him. <laughs> Woo! No, well, I guess so. I can't ask that guy about his shit. <laughs> <laughs>